City Council regular meetings scheduled March 28th on Thursday, 2024, starting at 7.01 p.m. Please rise for the invocation and pledge of allegiance. We'll have Mr. Rich, if you'll please step to the podium and deliver the invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mission statement, the city of Kirby is dedicated to delivering excellent municipal services to our community in a physically responsible manner. Please call roll. Here. 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 Thank you. And Councilman Molina will be here tonight. He'll just be here um, a little late today. Um, Thank you. No. There's no, okay. Okay, before we start, I just want to say this publicly. This has been going on since, what, August, September, October. I mean, it's getting ridiculous. We have already stated everybody up here is in agreement that we need a new system. The citizens are in agreement we need a new system. I don't understand. It shouldn't take. We're now in March. Um, so let's try to get next by next meeting something to happen. 
Now, how are we going to solve this where the citizens can be heard through YouTube because they're not here? It, now, is the attorney's mic, is that working? No. Oh, She tapped her own. Yeah, but hers is working. But what about him? And yeah, I was working over there. You're right. Okay. I'm gonna bring a karaoke machine. Yeah, Y'all think I'm joking? Need a loud I'm serious. I'm gonna bring a karaoke machine in here. Seriously. Did it work at the last meeting? Mm -hmm. Not this meeting, I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. We're on. Okay, great. This is the one that goes to sleep. Okay, we'll just have to keep it. Okay, we need batteries. Check. Okay. All right, we're great. on. Okay, and the city attorney's mic. They won't hear you, and then we'll hear it, and they will not be able to hear you, and I will hear it. Check. No. Okay. Well, is this mic working? Mm -hmm. We can sit here. I just don't want anybody saying that they can't hear any. Yeah, I'm just. Sir, would you mind moving, please? Do y'all want to scoot down, or do y'all want him to sit right here? We can zero here until Mr. Molina shows up. And oh, that's right. We'll, we'll, we'll and then when the he chair. gets here. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's right. whatever it takes. I forgot. You're right. Because he is coming. So. Yep. Okay. Um, we're going to go on to citizen participation. Susan Street, if you please step to the podium. The clock. They turned off. Oh my gosh. Um, Chief, it just it went out again. I think when she grabbed the mic, it went out. Maybe lose connection or what? Check. Check. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> I have to stand on it. It's wobbling. Uh, Susan Street, 5222 Coral Mist. Good evening, Council. I need to remind you to pull down your mics when you speak, please. There are a couple of you that forget to do that every time we can't hear you on the video. I don't plan to address your unseemly pursuit of dissolving the Kirby Senior Center other than to point out that at the Kirby Senior Center board meeting on Monday, March 18th, there was no agenda item included to discuss this process or to vote for dissolution. Consequently, item 8E on this council agenda stating a public hearing just doesn't work. The board has not discussed it. Therefore, And there is no separate agenda item to open and close a public hearing this evening, as I stated at the previous meeting. Don't you think the seniors who use the center have a right to voice their opinions about having the city take over their center? So on to the budget. I'm having difficulty finding a budget amendment for the end of fiscal year 22-23. There was an 
update presentation, but no action item on the December 14th, 23 agenda. The council has voted to create a Parks and Recreation Department on February 22nd, 2024, with little knowledge of actual added costs related to the current budget. In that same meeting, council voted to pay for fitness instructors, including water aerobics. Where is Four months reserve in the bank. This comes to approximately $1.4 million. There has been no amended budget for the 23-24 fiscal year, but this council keeps adding expenses. Tonight, with Ackerman change orders alone, you'll be adding $135,161 to the bond budget. And we were told that the city started with about Four million could be justified as sewer water repairs and come from the water fund, but the additional change orders may or may not be able to come from that fund. How do you approve expenditures without knowing how much money you actually have? Don't you people have a personal budget that you have to manage, or do you just put the extra expenses on a credit card? The city cannot do that. You're also considering an additional $39,000 for street assessment. Do we really need to do that? He doesn't know what streets need to be fixed. We all drive in Kirby and know that there are certain sections of road that need help. We aren't talking about doing an entire street, only the bad sections of specific streets. Yes, San Antonio has this assessment done every four or five years, but they are so much bigger and have hundreds of miles of road to consider. We only have about 94 streets, some short, less than 200 feet, and some long, over a mile. And we know where the issues are. The zipper machine was purchased for that purpose, to fix sections of road that need repair. Yes, there is an additional cost for running the machinery that we don't have. But that is minimal and can be coordinated with multiple zipper repairs. Council, please think about what you're spending our money on, and is it really necessary? Or can common sense and simple observation be applied to do what needs to be done? From my perspective, the city needs to, one, provide a final budget and two, provide an amended budget showing additional expenditures for 23-24. The residents of Kirby deserve to be informed of how their tax money is being spent, and the council can then make informed decisions on future expenses, because I'm willing to bet that no one on council knows if the city is in the Thank you. Moving on to Emma Lombrios. Lombrios, are you please step up forward to the podium after? Is I'm it? I'm gonna have to keep pressing it so it okay. keeps going through. Okay. I'm different COVID related. We have the same concerns. Are you? No, we'll be separate. Separate. Correct. Right here at the, the 5631 Seguin Road. And I was one of the ones that was grandfathered in. So I'm really not too sure once I'm ready to sell my house, if I'm going to be able to sell it as residential. I looked on the website, it's not very um, user friendly. And um, some neighbors have sold their house or even my neighbor next door. Um, there was a city map that was colored in. All the light was light blue or green. Anyway, everything on Seguin Road that's supposed to be commercial was a certain color. I believe dark blue. Dark blue. Okay. My neighbor has been coming um, to the council meetings, and on that map, anything that is light blue is considered residential. Well, she had hers switched over to residential. So I'm really not sure what's going on, how did that happen? And if it's possible, then I'll do that to my property. Because once I sell it, it what I get out of it, 
is going to depend on if I sell it as residential or if I sell and I'm gonna be losing out. So my question is, once I'm ready to sell and I was grandfathered in, what's the status going to be for me to be able to sell it? Residential or commercial? Or is it going to be commercial? That's, so that's kind of why I'm here. Sit down. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Nancy Pena. If you please step forward to the podium. Hi, my name is Nancy Pena. I'm the owner of Pena Insurance Agency, 2924 Ackerman Road. And um, I, I'm pretty sure y'all. I'm pretty sure y'all really don't care what I have to read. Miller's residence on March 22nd, 2024. Jack Miller is a citizen journalist. Jack Miller was critical on his, uh, of city of Kirby officials on his YouTube page. San Cardona. In direct response to the criticism and fear of what information Jack Miller might have, the city of Kirby obtained a search and arrest warrant tar targeting Jack Miller and his producer. Can y'all hear me? About alleged assault with a deadly weapon on January 24, 2024. Hear me now? In the post, the city of Kirby published screenshots of someone pointing the non-lethal pepper gun at a at a skidster uh, that that appeared to be a. Audio in the original video makes clear that the device. Shots also show the officer inspecting the pepper gun. Non lethal pepper gun could not support these charges. The Texas Penal Code describes a deadly weapon as a firearm. Let me read that again. Deadly weapon as a firearm. The Texas Penal Code describes a deadly weapon as a firearm manifestly. of inflicting death or serious bodily injury. Furthermore, the deadly weapon must be used during the commission of the offense. Furthermore, the deadly weapon must be used during the commission of an assault and causes serious bodily injury. It appears there was no no deadly weapon and no serious bodily injury. So if the city of Kirby knows the charges are not legitimate, what is the re this really about? It appears Jack there threatened the city of Kirby and they didn't want to silence him. The search warrant allowed the city to, to take from Jack Miller computer, CD, drums, DVDs, zip drives, drives, external hard, hard drives, photo books, cell phones, and the list is obviously, obviously the city of Kirby makes a point to highlight Jack Miller's They are threatening him differently, or treating him differently. These individuals. Once that happens, we stand ready to fully prosecute claims against the city of Kirby. Seizure, malicious prosecution, and many. Right. 
y'all know, y'all also um, touched someone that I love dearly. Y'all, where should I go? Where should I push? Can you pause please? So, okay, just now okay so y'all touch my someone that i love dearly which is my husband and roxanne cardona um arrested him on saying that he had um uh, stolen rocks and it's moving a rock from one side to another is not stealing but what's it called i know that y'all don't see me here often but this has really i i don't I don't know what you're doing up there. Try, it's just so sad to see this. It's really sad, and y'all don't do anything about it. Thank you. Next, we have Roger Romans. Please step forward to the podium. Roger Romans, 4511 Henneke. I'm speaking this evening on item. 9E, um, discussion, possible action, directing the interim city manager to proceed with legal guidance. Who asked the city manager to spend <coughs> tax paying money to look into the dissolution of the Kirby Senior Center? Okay, this is the first time dissolution is coming to this council. So please, someone ask who asked the legal counsel for the city to look into the dissolution of the Kirby Senior Center. On that matter there, the Kirby Senior Center had a meeting on the 18th of March. They discussed the audit. An audit has been conducted. They didn't give any specifics because it was a draft. The final copy will be presented upon payment. I believe there were some $9,500 that had to be paid out. Some of the other stuff at the meeting that was talked about outstanding bills was $7,200 to PRESA, $16,000 to the IRS for back taxes, penalties and fees, interest. They gave the statement that the senior center had $17,000, 10,000 in savings, 7,000 in checking. The 10,000 was set aside for the budget. It's gonna be about $9,500 for the totality of the budget. Well, that's $23,000 to be spent and there's only $7,000 in the checking account. If you all are dissolving the Kirby Senior Center Corporation, who incurs the debt? You have the authority to dissolve the corporation, but you do not have the authority to dissolve the debt. These were just three bills. They did not go into detail on any other outstanding bills. As the audit is in draft mode, can't look at that. Referencing the audit, they didn't specify what year the audit was. Was it the 2022 audit or the 2023 audit? The last audit that was completed was in 2021. They also stated they had to readjust the baseline. Why would you have to readjust a baseline when you had 2021 as an audit? That is your baseline. An audit, if it's conducted, even if it was for 2023, would need to go back to 2021, which would have been the baseline, and you have to do the audit for the two years. There's only one reason to readjust your baseline. It's to cover something up. 
was it mismanagement? You know, was it poor, poor direction or what? That, this council has removed the previous board, I believe it was back in July or August, and replaced the board with five council members. At that time, if there was any mismanagement or any malfeasance by the board, they should have been held accountable. The fact that there was no accountability done means the current board is now accountable for their misdoings. Part of leadership is taking swift and appropriate corrective actions. When you don't take the corrective actions, it then becomes your burden. Please, if you're going to dissolve, make an accurate assessment of what the debt is that we, the residents, are going to have to incur. And let us know out of what departments is this money going to come out of. We started the meeting acting in a fiscally responsible manner. Are we being fiscally responsible when we're taking on other people's debt because we want to cover up for wrongdoing or malfeasance. Let's hold people accountable so that we, the taxpayers, don't have to bear that burden with reduced services because, as Ms. Street stated earlier, you know, the money comes out of somewhere. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have Deborah. Coburn, please step forward to the podium. Hello, I'm Deborah Coburn. I live at 5638 Old Seguin Road right down the street. And uh, along with my neighbor here, Emma, we recently found out that our the time. zoning, we're in zone C2, which uh, zones us in commercial. And we're just trying to find out a little bit more information about that. Like, how do we get... Uh, zone back to residential or as she stated we were grandfathered in what 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 does that mean i'm, I'm sure the information is there it's just uh we're just becoming privy to all this uh since we're deciding to sell our property so we just need a little bit more information about that and where we can go and find it because we went on the website but it's just a little bit vague it doesn't really tell us a whole lot so we're just trying to find out where we can find out more information about the zoning in uh on our street in Osagin Road. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Moving on to 6A, consideration of an action on minutes, regular meeting minutes, March 14, 2024. Council Member Garza. Did, uh, did uh, BJ Boyd sign up to speak? No. Oh, because oh, you signed at the bottom. Okay, so going back, we have our last BJ Void. If you please step forward. I'm sorry, I was going in a row. Look at the bottom. My name is BJ Voigt. I reside at 3634 Kirby Drive for over 62 years, which I'm not supposed to say that, but I do anyway. What I'm here about is a few things. One thing is the Dr. Roland fiasco. How much in bottom line, are we spending to get him out of his contract? I, I, Like they said, it's hard to figure out how to get anywhere on our website to find out how much it's costing us citizens, which that money could have been spent on a whole lot of things for the city. The second thing is I have three neighbors that are moving. My concern is I had three new other neighbors move in and they did not know that they were responsible for half the alley. Uh, part of the, the front of the, the trees over the road. Are citizens, new people, are they supposed to go read all these ordinances to find out that they're responsible for that? Or do we give them some kind of a packet that says, hey, that, you know, with general info? Because none of them knew. One's been there five years. I told them about it. The other one moved in two years, and one just moved in a week ago. So nothing's ever been told to these citizens, but I'm fixing to have three new three new places, people moving in, and 
I shouldn't be the one to have to tell them or, or should they have to go read all the ordinances? Because I know when we had a Citizen 101 class here, I did not know that, and I lived here quite a, over 50 years, that your trash can has to be to the side of your house. They cannot be in front of your house. They don't give tickets for it, but it's still an ordinance. A dumb ordinance, yes, but it's still, you know, things like that. Or this, the new people informed of the trees at a certain length, the grass on the curbs, the grass in the alleyways, you know, if they don't know about it, are they supposed to read the ordinances? And yes, I'm going to repeat that. That's a lot because it is not user friendly on our on our website. Uh, and then the other thing is, um, <coughs> no, I forgot what I was going to. Oh well, that's it. Those are to. I'll I'll just think about the next time. But I think the Dr. Rowland thing, we should be informed of how much money that cost us out of our pocket, and informing new homeowners of what they're responsible for. Thank you. Thank you. Now moving on to 6A, consideration of action on minutes, 6A regular meeting minutes, March 14, 2024. Councilmember Garza. Uh, yes, Mayor. I had a issue on, uh, it was basically motion 9I. Uh, it says here that, uh, that I uh, seconded, I, by a uh, motion made by me, actually, and seconded by Martin. And then uh, when we re-talked about it here, it also said that uh, a motion was made by Lozano and seconded by me for uh, the CBD grant improvements to the parks. I did not second any of the ones that were <coughs> to the parks. I know that I <laughs> So um, I didn't get to watch the video to see all the other ones that may have been uh, off, but... The ones that were specific to the parks, uh -huh. I didn't second those. I only seconded the one to the streets. Councilmember Lovato. Um, yes. So on the same item, 9I, uh, motion made by Councilmember Lozano, seconded by Councilmember Garza to rescind, not resend. If we can just change that, um, I think there's a there really is a big difference between uh, rescind and resend, and I believe by going back on the video that it was uh, Council Member Garza that seconded it so that we could rescind it. Yes. But, but uh, it actually, yeah, but the first one was actually uh, made by, it was by you for parks and then by it for this first one. Oh, yes. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Can y'all please um, get the changes together and send them in to the city secretary? Of course. Okay, we'll bring that back. Thank you. Moving on to 7A, interim city manager report, 7A discussion and update fire department. Oh, wait, did we pass the minutes or? There was more? Bringing back, I'm sorry. Was there more? What was, I, we're bringing it back, is that yes. what it was? Correct. Okay, thank you. Go I only thing I wanted back was the the water. I mean, I never asked to put the discussion update on the fire department. I'd okay. Right. We're good. And by the way, just so everybody up knows, I did not have anything to do with this agenda, by the way. Moving on to 7B, discussion and update of finance department, water utility update. We don't have anybody here. Is that a fair One in particular was a uh, $750,000 investment that uh, had to be made, and that was a clerical error. The actual bill was uh, $85. Uh, 
So if it was a clerical error, so that, but nonetheless, it, it uh, would reflect it as an adjustment. Uh, what I asked uh, the finance director and former uh, program supervisor to break down the various types of adjustments because my sense was that there was maybe, uh, maybe not a clear understanding of what adjustments mean. So there's several different categories. One category is called clerical adjustment where we just had an input error and, and that resulted in a need to make an adjustment. So for each month, we've identified the amount of the clerical error adjustments and the total number of accounts that were involved. Like for example, in October there was two adjustments that totaled about $169. Uh, and that was in the month of October, November, there was two adjustments totaling uh, almost $83 and so on and so forth. Uh, December was uh, $23, $23 and so on and so forth. The next category is meter read errors. And that's that's what we had a, a Big ticket item, and that was a seven hundred fifty thousand um, dollars um, misread, and actually that came to our attention by, by the president. That's the one that I mentioned a while ago. We made an adjustment, seven hundred forty nine dollars, and uh, because the actual bill was eighty five dollars, so the bill was eighty five dollars, but it was a uh, error in the uh, meter read. I believe we read about ten percent of our meters; the rest are electronically read. But there's a manual read on, I believe, about 10% of the computer. So uh, this is unfortunately a common occurrence in other places where uh, sometimes there's an input error. Uh, and then there's water leaks. Uh, these are water leaks on the city side where uh, we eat the cost for the, uh, for the loss of water. Uh, there's another one. There's another one that will come up in, in March because I just saw it in the last day or so. So it wasn't, it's not reflected on the report, uh, report and it uh, accounts for a large uh, business in town where we were losing a substantial amount of water. And then this, and then the next category is water leaks on the customer side where we make adjustments if, if they're able to provide us a, uh, a uh, receipt showing that the water leak was repaired and we make an adjustment on our side. What we do is look at the previous three months, calculate an average, and that's what we uh, charge the resident. We give them some benefit of the doubt uh, whenever there's a significant water leak on their side and if they have it prepared uh, uh, immediately. And then uh, there's some other miscellaneous uh, adjustments, but that pretty much captures most of the adjustments that we're experiencing today, and we'll continue to keep counsel up to, uh, up to date on that. There's a summary in terms of, I know we, we went through about almost nine months of not um, pursuing uh, disconnects or late fees for about nine months. So our former program supervisor put together an area that I know I was asked about that. I didn't exercise any editorial liberties with that. I went to council to see exactly what we're being told. And so that information that we uh, in the handout in terms of, uh, to the best of our knowledge, of what happened and when provided in the council package. You know, we discussed that at the uh, And then on the, this is a piece that, or this is an element of the finance director's report. Uh, the ARPA funds were a year in, in uh, the final to do up uh, last year, March of 2023. Uh, the annual finance director got that report uh, updated. And as, as a result of that reconciliation, we now have the data for the 24 report that will be due at the, uh, at the end of April. In that report, what we uh, reflected was council's intent to find the remaining balance of about $1.1 million that we had in remaining uh, ARPA funds or COVID funds that would be applied to uh, Fox Cross and uh, the Ackerman Street projects. And that we uh, uh, need those additional resources for those, uh, for those two projects. So, what the ARPA funds ask for is, is that money committed? Uh, and we said yes, and this is where, you know, this is how it's committed based on the council, uh, the council of the last council chief. And then, uh, uh, in the, see, the uh, utility cutoffs will resume on Wednesday, April the 3rd. This is the payments that were due on March the 15th. Uh, so we will start the, uh, Cut off for residential and commercial accounts on April the 3rd. So this will be the second, 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 second consecutive month 
that would restart the uh, disconnect and the collection of late payments after about a, well, almost a nine months of uh, hiatus. Um, and we we were assured, I believe, yet by today, that the delinquent notices will include a flyer that went out to remind people that uh, that Wednesday is our cutoff deadline. Uh, there's a practice that we have reinstituted and we put it in a couple of notices. It's on our Facebook page and it's also on our web page that on the day of the uh, utility cutoff, we'll, we'll suspend the uh, web based and phone payments. Because what I realized in talking to folks out in the lobby was that when folks were making their online payments at say nine o'clock in the morning, uh, our public works folks was out in the field trying to do disconnect. So uh, we were crossing, we were tripping over each other. And so to be fair to the customers, uh, it'd be best for them to come in, make the payment, and then we can report that in real time. Because there's a little bit of a lag because we have to generate a batch report to show the uh, uh, electronic payment, the web-based payment. So it's best for the customer to come in, make the payment on the day of the cutoffs. That way there's no miscommunication, no misunderstandings. And if the payments on the day of the cutoff are made by 5 o'clock, then uh, we can generally have that water service turned on by probably 8 o'clock at the very latest, depending on, on our staffing situation. But I've been pretty much sure that we should be able to take it, take care of it within a couple of hours, again, depending on the number of disconnects that are involved. Is there any questions on anything that uh, we've talked about? Yes. So the $750,000 or $49,000 adjustment um, I'm sorry, I'm still not buying that. There is no way that there was one adjustment made for that entire time, and that is a glitch. Um, I know for a fact, again, there was credits and adjustments just from being in the lobby that day when there was cutoffs, and I seen people's bills. There was different credits were given. There was promises made, this and that. So this is not reflective of that. Also, I don't buy this either because it was done by Mariana Ramirez, the program supervisor, who also stood before us last council meeting and stated she was never in the water department. We all know up here that that is not the truth. Um, and I do find it funny that all of a sudden, that even on the website, which I saw from a screenshot, and this was brought to our attention today, um, that another resident was saying that they had all of a sudden there was a glitch again for a million dollars. Like, I'm not into really conspiracy theories, and y'all know that, but this is suspect. All of a sudden, that it's not adding up. Um, we're just going by off of what somebody is saying, and then we go back to this utility billings update again by that same program supervisor who was doing the water billing at the time before. Um, I even watched a YouTube video from the one that Councilmember Martin and Molina attended for the the utility um, town hall. And August 2nd, cutoffs were supposed to resume. And then I go back and I'm still even thinking, lumping together September through December, um, even if you look after that. So this is what I'm basically saying. Every week is a different story that we hear. Every single week, we hear something different. There's a different timeline presented to us. Um, I understand that um, that staff member is going to be no longer with us, but and I sent something to council that probably didn't have a chance to check your email just before you came here because I got it maybe five o'clock or five thirty, I don't remember what time it is. On that one point one million dollar glitch. What I understand is that as we were trying to generate uh, the bills uh, yesterday, um, what I understand, and this is in the email because I was trying to get an understanding, a better understanding of what was going on, is that as we try to generate bills, the system automatically, as I'm told, generates a hold on an account if there is a work order. In other words, if it's a start of service or an end of service. So if an account has a start of service or end of service, it, it kind of puts a hold on that account. And again, from a layperson not familiar with how ours is set up, we used a different version of income in another place. Uh, but this version, uh, puts a stop on all utility bills. So we have to clear it and put a, what I understand maybe a dummy number in a placeholder to clear that one account. Because if that account has a work order, is what I was told, then all the subsequent accounts cannot be generated. We could get the bills out. So in doing so, 
this one account had just been opened up the day before. So as a result of that, I guess it was too new uh, to recognize any kind of data, and it, it erroneously generated a 1.1 million uh, uh, charge. And as soon as all the accounts were, uh, uh, all the billing was generated, then, then the former staffers, former staffers, excuse me, went back and cleared it out. So it was a temporary number in there, and it's not, it's not on the account anymore. That and others have been removed. But again, I understand it was, it was a, a result of a, a placeholder that's required to make sure that a series of all the remaining bills can be generated and a lot of time. So that's the explanation I got today. And there's more detailed email from the program supervisor and council's uh, email. Right. Now also, I read that email every single day there's allegedly, there was some entering of numbers incorrect for months. Every single day, we're talking about somebody was putting in, was supposed to be $80 and they put in 8,000. I mean, this was going on a continuous basis. We know there wasn't direct deposits. We know that there was money laying around. We know all of this that was happening. Matter of fact, from last meeting, we were told sitting up here that direct deposits were done up to date daily and they were not. So that's what I'm saying. Like, we don't know. We hear something every single day. It's a different story. We don't know what's going on. And to be honest, we just need to really be honest, even with the public. We don't know. And we are not going to know unless there's like a forensic audit. I mean, let's be honest. We're not going to know what's really going on with accounts or anything of that nature. Because normally, when there is something like that going on, errors like that every single day for months, Something suspect is going on. Councilmember Martin. Yeah, I agree with you, Mayor. Um, and that's a possibility where fraud could be coming in, money could be, be stolen or whatever. But I, what I wanted to ask you was this $1.1 million, that was a, just a number thrown in there by the computer system. Is that same number going to be used every time this, this happens? I mean, it would be easy to identify if it did. You understand what I'm saying? I, I, sir, honestly, I, I cannot identify why that number, that specific number was used, or why it could have been another number. Uh, I was told that has something to do with the day, but I do know that the account okay. was open for one day. Right. Okay. A flag that caused that number to populate. That's all I can say. I'm sorry. But, but Mr. Grider, Mayor Grider is right. This, this has been going on way too long. And hopefully you got a handle on it now. Well, yes, sir. I mean, we, we have two folks here that are helping us with the, with the audit. And it's a time to miss. They help me look at other issues. But the primary focus is to uh, make sure that we're audited for ready by the end of April. And so at that time, or after that time frame, we'd be in a better position to address any other concerns that they have in terms of uh, um, just the improprieties or, or other issues that they have to be a concern to the council. I I understand that some of our citizens are going to say things to try to keep get out from paying a bill or whatever. And they may have done that in the past. Um, so well, I never got a beer. I didn't think I owe anything. Nobody knows that's wrong. You know, you're going to owe something every month where it's just a service charge. Whether you use it or not, you're going to get a service charge, you know, a bare minimum or whatever it is. But just. And, and we do have folks coming in that exactly this, this, that happened. Out every month, uh, so we worked out a, a payment plan with them to help them out. Like yeah. you do for other folks. Right. So if the payment plan, we have a form that people out, and they commit to paying a, fraction, a percentage, you know, either 50% or 30% of the bill, and in addition to their regular bill. And if they don't make that payment the following month, the subsequent month after that, then we'll make a water bill. Okay. So we're trying to get people on track. Right. I understand you know, that. You know, it's important we get started to cover that money before we're off all these Right. Okay. But let's. But this is what we need to be honest and be clear with is that, yes, there is audit going on, but that's just a regular city audit. That is not a deep dive into the water department and the billing. Sure. 
that's that needs to be clear. So it's not saying that this audit is going to come up and say, oh, yeah, um, this and catch what's been going on for the past eight months. And I just want to also say publicly that we knew that certain staff members didn't even have basic math skills and we continued to let this go on. Councilmember Garza. Um, uh, I hope by we, you don't necessarily mean us. I, I didn't uh, interview anybody, so I was unaware that we had people working in the office that didn't have basic math skills until it was told. Um, but beyond that, one thing I did want to ask is um, when the bills come through, uh, I obviously don't know the way that this works. So when the bills come through, does it automatically populate a, let's say like a, an Excel spreadsheet that shows you all the people who live in Kirby and all the bills of which they have? Because um, the only reason I'm asking is something like that, like with the $1.1 million idea, I mean, you'd see like $86, $96, $76, million, $1.1 million. You'd go, hold on a minute, you know, <laughs> something's off. And and you know maybe perhaps we would have looked into it prior to this being brought to our attention. Sir, I mean, I, I, you know, I've had conversations with some council members on that issue. Uh -huh. It's the same dilemma I've encountered in, in, in other places. Uh, where uh, the other places where I, I hear you, that when you see uh, an anomaly like mm -hmm. that, uh, well, two things. We had a conversation with the public group folks that if you're doing a meter read and it says, you know, your reading is 100, and then the next read is 75. You know, there's something missed, and so we we had that two weeks ago where it went backwards. Mm -hmm. Second reading. On the other hand, the flip side was if your reading was 100 and the next one was 50,000, then again something's amiss. Mm -hmm. So that's something we've talked about. We need to train our eyes to pay attention to those problems so that we don't pass the problem on to something else. Now, in terms of what we generate here, yes, uh, I've, I've seen it happen other places. I'm not defending. I'm simply explaining that. You know, we've had conversations with folks that if you see something pop up that's out of the norm, it should catch our attention. There, there's, I, I think the next version of ENCODE, and that's a discussion for another day, uh, and, I, and I, I've asked the staff, is that very presented to council, I understand it may have been, I don't have a dollar amount on that, but uh, a previous version of ENCODE that I worked with uh, showed those anomalies not only to us, but to the office staff, but to the customer. So in real time, like your uh, another utility in town, you could look up your account and you could see uh, on a daily basis your consumption to the tenth of a gallon. And so at some point, you know, we'll, we'll, as time permits, because we've got uh, part of our play in full, uh, you know, we'll come back to council and see if that's a policy decision council gotcha. wants to make to buy into uh, an upgraded version because I know with the staff we have on board, in fact, we had a consultant come on board and once she was being explained in code, she just kind of threw her hands up and left. So uh, we thought it was going to be our backup to one of the ladies that was going to be and, and, you know, it just didn't work out. So uh, part of it is, uh, is human error uh, on several fronts and different levels, and part of it is the technology could be, you know. Upgrade. Yes, I mean, we can't always put enough technology in, uh, but it's not all. Uh, I get you. So basically what, what I was asking though was we, we don't, I mean, you're saying that a newer version of ENCODE actually offers what I was stating where it would, I, I believe so yeah. Because, uh, that's what I've seen before. Okay. And not only did we see it, uh, we actually, the version I used was the one that we were familiar with, because it was an updated version, was uh, a customer, if they're signed up on the app, they can get a notification if they have a link at the same time as they were using hmm. it. But didn't have the staff to monitor the leads, but the customer could see that and come in right away without having to wait until they got the bill at the end of the month. So if there is a more used customer, what I would call customer, you can bring the office and benefit the staff. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Sure. Um, and before y'all go, and um, I, the reason why I said we is because before Dr. Roland did let us know that there were certain individuals and what was going on. Even the previous financial consultant said about training, about what they were not doing. He mentioned that, and everybody up here knows, they heard it out of their mouths, what he was saying. Councilmember Lozano. Um, yes, in regards to this um, update that it was prepared by our program supervisor. Uh, that was that you're looking at? Was our, uh, well, yes, the initial was prepared by the program supervisor. 
So when it says reviewed, the interim finance director actually went and looked through all the accounts to make sure that that's. She, she simply looked at the numbers that were provided and, and asked for the justification and then to make sure that. So she looked at this sheet, not like additional no. documentation. Okay. Um, and then the other thing is um, regarding that error for one point some million dollars. Um, it seemed like the issue started off where there was the order, the work order or whatnot wasn't open and was open, but not closed. So is that something that the public works no, has to do? I, that's or, what I thought, ma'am. I thought it was uh, a city initiated work order and I was told it was a system that generated it. I forget the words that you used in the email, but it automatically generated Work order, order, something to that effect. I said, what does that mean? And she said, well, it's the system generating that work order. If I guess they're wanting to close it, uh, close it down, open it down. And there was a third category that I just don't remember. But no, it, that's initially what I thought, but it, it's not uh, city. <coughs> okay. <coughs> that's all I have. Mayor Pro Tem. <coughs> so if you, if you look at we went weeks without making deposits. We had cash and checks laying around. Citizens' checks were not being cashed for several weeks. All of this is a red flag. We don't know how much money is unaccounted for. We don't know when the deposits were actually made. We'd have to go to the bank to look, look at all of that. But at this point, I really feel that we need to start looking into a forensic audit because this is this is too much. There is no there is no explaining this within this building. We need someone to come in here and do a forensic audit and figure this out. Because we we don't know how much money we've lost. And the city of Kirby cannot afford to lose any money. So I feel like we need to really start looking into doing a forensic audit and um and then we'll know we'll know what really happened because every week we get told different different things, but we don't know what's true or not. And the only way we're gonna get any truth is by doing a forensic audit. It's gonna be costly, but I think it needs to be done. Councilmember Martin. No, Mayor Pro Tem, I agree with you. But I asked I asked the program's uh, supervisor several months ago about this encoding system and if it would throw a flag if there was something obvious wrong. And she said yes. And apparently, I didn't get the right information. Well, that's what I'm saying. Same thing as the mayor saying. Something we're being, being told, and it, it wasn't happening as we were being told. And because I've talked to a lot of students, says, yeah, they're in code. You know, if there's a, a leak, some of them have the system, of, it's going to show you a leak, you know. But I, we just wasn't getting information that we were promised to be maybe true and correct. I don't know, but we need to do better and we need to start, I think, with a forensic audit, like, as they say. I do have a, um, if, so every company and every, you know, um, they have training programs. I know that we have like online programs where they can train and sit in front of the computer, but mm -hmm. It seems like a company as big as that, they would have somebody that can fly out and actually come in here in the office. And I know that's costly, you know, costly for to fly them out and do the training. But to be honest, if we had the previous program supervisor and then, the, I mean, it's basically somebody. Um, it's almost like train, like the blind leading the blind. Like, I hate to say it like that, but that's the truth. Like you have somebody who doesn't know what they're doing, training somebody else. So why wouldn't we get somebody else in here? Um, and then also, too, again, as I know I mentioned to you about the uh, inner service agreements, I know the other mayors have mentioned to me that may possibly some of the other cities that have the same systems do an agreement and they'll bring their people over to, like, work in the office to kind of show they have the same system. Um, but <laughs> at this point, I feel like if we can get somebody actually from the company to come in and actually do some official training, I think that is actually worth it. Um, Instead of everybody just, you know, just continuing this cycle of not what's go knowing what's going on. That can be, uh, I understand. I was just getting confirmation. Uh, three staff did go to the program supervisor. I'm not sure if 
before I came on board, then I found out that she had been scheduled to go, but did not go. So I don't know if she was in but we had to do the two consulting. Um, anyone else? Um, um, I, uh, I was just thinking that, um, you know, if we, uh, tried to hire somebody and they had, you know, experience with ENCODE, that would actually, uh, be very helpful, you know, so maybe we could start on the right foot to begin with where they already came in with the experience rather than trying to just hire whoever and then teach everything we can to that person. And don't get me wrong, I think some people could utilize some uh, some training. I mean, some updated training all the time is always a great thing, but I just feel that uh, at this at this moment, um, what we really need is uh, people who already have some experience in doing what we're trying to do. Thanks. Mark, I agree. Updated job posting to request that if it's not in the, in the job description, I know for sure it's in the financial, uh, financial director's mm -hmm. position. And if the other, uh, that's definitely something we can ask the folks if they have a that it's hard to find, or at least people that are interested in coming in at a thousand that is off on Okay, and the last thing is um, the checks. So I know we were saying with so there was an email that came, and a citizen had a check from January, and it just got cast in March. It was just done in March. So that's a long time. And nobody can say like that's not so. I don't know where those checks were sitting. Now, can I say something ahead, like yeah. that? <laughs> yeah. Then those checks for the security system go to the PD. Was that where it was? Okay, there for the alarm system, Chief. Can you answer? Can you answer that for the alarm system? Um, a citizen had wrote a check, and. They thought it was already cash, and then March they came across their account cash, and they were like, "Oh." They wrote it in January. Oh, it used to be before. It's been a maybe month or two since we've changed protocols for better internal controls, but it used to be where my administrative assistant every year would send it out in January for everyone to pay for their permits for the alarm. Um, but when she receives it, she goes and drops it off immediately. But I don't. I didn't know about an alarm permit not being paid or anything about that. No one informed me. Okay, yeah, she sent me the email. I'll, um, I CC the city manager, but I'll CC it again to you. So maybe okay. you can ask, just to make sure. I just want to make sure that it, if it happens again, just make sure that the person. So just to update y'all, um, animal <coughs> control and my administrative assistant, I have opted out. I no longer want them touching money. I think we need to control where the money's coming in and let it go through one point. And along with the city manager, he agreed. So we're trying to control that. We're not going to be accepting funds from either department anymore. So it's another work in progress. Mm -hmm. uh, Yes, um, I believe at the last meeting after Ms. Pierce spoke, I did ask whether or not all the checks had been cashed and whether or not we had already uh, taken care of a lot of this. And um, I mean, I know it was for water department particularly that we were speaking, but, you know, I was assured that that type of stuff had happened. Um, 
is is there like a separate area where those checks for uh permits were being held or or something of that nature because i didn't realize you know somebody was or that the checks were being cashed you know in march that had been written in january or was it just like a whole stack of checks we just eventually took in or to be honest it we don't know let's just be honest no okay. we don't know just like he was saying that uh, our city manager is saying that there has been bills that has popped up that are months late, mm -hmm. just randomly have been popping up, you know, over time. So we really don't know. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Anything else with finance and water? Okay. Good. Okay. Moving on to 7C, discussion and update on police department. Good evening, Council. Just a couple things to update y'all. Um, don't forget the stats will be posted uh, the first week of April for this month's productivity for the officers. Um, as far as coffee with cops, it's still in the air, but we're, we've already kind of planned out an, an idea for it to be on June 15th at 9 a.m. on a Saturday at the taco factory. Um, we will have that on the next crime control agenda to discuss and move forward with. Currently, I have 12 full-time officers, four reserve. We still need four more officers to be at full capacity. We need one animal control officer and one part-time kennel. Uh, Chief, I'm throwing this out there because I got the concerns from a citizen. Our two new vehicles that we purchased, mm -hmm. what are we lacking? So nothing now. Um, we have, they're in the process of being, we have all of them wrapped. Um, they're at rescue ops currently getting all of the light, lighting and everything put on the vehicles. Okay. Bumper and all. All right. How long have we had these vehicles? Um, we, I can't tell you the date, but I can come back with a date. Well, it don't matter. It's only there's... been maybe two or three months or so. Yeah, the point, the point I'm asking the citizens that I, I can't remember who it was to ask me. I come, I was told we didn't have the funding to implement the, everything it, need, it needed inside. So where did that money come from? So we, I went to crime prevention. So I had the funding up until the next vehicle. So I had $24,000 left for both vehicles. And for me to update them to the safety standard where we, we'd be a, more, a lot more safe and it'd be a lot better interaction with the civilians, I would, have, I would need another 24000 So this past week... Ms. Sapadak, I don't even remember when it was. Was it this Tuesday? I believe so. Um, I think it was this Tuesday. Um, we had a meeting and we went through the crime prevention to get the other 24000 Okay. And when do you think they're going to be on the streets? <sighs> well, I don't know how long it's going to take. Um, but I can tell you I'm hoping within the next two months they're going to be ready and locked and loaded. Okay. Thank you. I will keep you updated. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to 7D, discussion and update public works. Madam Mayor and Council Members, there's some uh, communication from our public works director. He's not uh, available today on vacation. If there's any information there, the Council will follow up. Any questions that have been made about the Swan Street project? Um, I do have a question about Von Braun. Um, because wait a minute, let me look at it's not zipper streets aren't on this agenda right now. Um, so Von Braun, um, I know last time council member Martin made up a good point because I know how initially it started. I had got a call also saying what's going on in Von Braun, and I said, I don't know to be honest, like I have no idea. And then um, they were, I said, well, maybe they're practicing. I don't know. You know, it's like, I don't know. Maybe they're practicing. That's what I've been telling people. But then it came by when somebody was like, you need to go to that street and look how it looks. It looks horrible. I mean, even if they're practicing, but also too, again, we need to know why did they choose that street or exactly how did that happen? Um, that, 
that would be a question I think to have that for the next meeting if we can have that. Councilmember Garza. Uh, yeah, I mean, also when it when it came to um, to Von Braun, from what I'm understanding, not only did we zip Von Braun, but we also attempted to lay the asphalt on Von Braun, of which. Um, in the past, the zipper machine had been utilized to zip the area, and then we would pack it down as much as we could, and then we would hire a company to come out and lay the topping, and they would also, you know, uh, basically, you know, push down the uh, the um, zipped portions again. They would get their roller, put it down, and then they would put down the asphalt. So um, I don't know why uh, we decided to do Von Braun, and I don't know why we uh, – Kind of went that route of um, trying to top it ourselves, but um, you know uh, we obviously don't have the machinery to to do asphalt. Um, if anything, we have a pothole filler at best. And um, my my belief was was even when we were doing a uh, janky, you know, we we zipped it. Um, we we uh, was it called crowned it, um, and then. Uh, we had a company come in and finish it up and uh it's it's my understanding that that's how the zipper machine ought to be utilized because it still saved us a ton of money probably one fourth of the cost it would have cost us if we hired a company to do it but um in an effort to showcase that uh you know that, that this can be done for a for a like a slight cost um it's my belief that we should continue if we are going to utilize the zipper machine to do it in that manner Thank you. Council Member Martin. Yes. And uh, I remember addressing Chief Hilberg at the time. He was a uh, acting interim city manager. First call I got was on Crest. It looked like they took asphalt in the front end loader, spread it out on the road, back drug it. Didn't roll it, didn't do nothing. Stood there a week or so before the company come out, did about uh, 10 feet of the chip seal on it left. Took me about a week to get that one little section done. Okay, I said, maybe they're practicing for, uh, maybe it's what I thought was what was left over from uh, Swan. He was gonna do the bridge to what, Deer Grove. That's right. Well, I go look, nothing's been done there. The next thing I know, I get a call from uh, another councilman. You need to go to Von Braun and Fred Hayes and look at what they've done there. So I go look, and, and then I started getting other citizens calling. And that's when I told, I forget, maybe it was Chief, we we got to stop this. We can't continue to waste money like we're doing. That was literally wasting money, what we did. And who gave him permission to do it? I have no idea. But all I know is we need to discuss it and talk about it and make sure it don't happen no more. That's all I got. Thank you. In response to that the zippers they've been trained on the zipper the zipper is not the issue the issue is them laying the asphalt down without no kind of uh sealant or nothing uh no cleaning it no sweeping it no not laying it down on top of just the street and, and waiting to have something done i mean they didn't roll it they didn't you know you wasted money uh, the, the zipper, you zip it, crown it, roll it, and then we'll bring a, a asphalt company in here to, to uh, surface it. That's what we did with uh, Janky. Janky and uh, Kazen. Kazen. Mm -hmm. And all I'm trying to say is we wasted some money on what we did whatever company from Bernie coming here to try to chip seal it. The citizens wasn't happy. I don't think nobody was happy on that issue. That's all I got. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Moving on. 8A. Discussion and possible action on change order number five, seeking compensation by the Ackerman Road Street Project contractor, Austin Bridge and Road, for the extra 61 unforeseen mailboxes needed to replace all the residents' mailboxes in the amount of $32,025. Uh, good evening. I'll turn the... Good 
Good evening. Uh, of course, my name is Carl Bain. I'm with Bain Medina Bain Engineers, and we're the engineers working on this project for Ackerman. Also have two contract representatives. James Trigger with Austin Bridge and Road, and this is Mr. Sean West. Sean West, project manager with Austin Bridge and Road. And uh, this first change order was for uh, additional mailboxes. Uh, we had uh, 23 mailboxes to be replaced in the original uh, plans and contracts. And it turns out there's an additional uh, total of 84, so it's an additional 61. And so we're using it at the same unit price for the mailboxes on there. And I guess you can explain a little more about what the issue is, uh, why they need to be replaced. There are several of them that are in ill shape and they need they need to be replaced but uh there was only uh 23 total in all actuality there's 80 80 some odd resident 84 residents so when we start replacing these this resident's going to come ask where where's mine and i don't, I don't know how i explain all that so Does that make sense Councilmember Martin. How did we miss that? How, well, this bid? Was I the, mean, uh, of course, we didn't prepare the plans. So this is what it was shown in the quantity uh, summary of quantities on the plans and the bid form on there. And so when we went, you know, we didn't since we didn't prepare the plans, it was signed by another engineer. We didn't check everything on the plans when we put it out to bid. I, I just feel we're getting a lot of extra charges on stuff that, I mean, don't get me wrong. They need a mailbox. There ain't no doubt about that. But I, I just feel that we're getting extra charges for things that wasn't considered or there's oversight or whatever. Because you know the next one coming up, you know you're going to hear from me. Oh, we're going to be talking about all of them. Yeah, okay. I understand. Council Member Lozano. Um, so did you go and do a site visit after, I mean, you got the 23 original, right? And the plans, did you go do a site visit to count those mailboxes and see if we actually had 23 or 84 mailboxes to replace? No, we didn't check all the quantities on the plans. When we did it, we put them out to bid because the other engineer signed the plans and Certified that that was correct on the quantities. Okay, so you don't go and look and at check all the, the site. No. Okay, because that's a big difference. Mm -hmm. Sixty-one mailboxes at five hundred and twenty-five. Mm -hmm. It's a big difference. So that's why I was asking if you know you went and did a, a visual to see well, if that's how. You know, we were worried about the big item. Yeah. You know, it, it's it's a ten million dollar contract. Yes, 61 is a lot. We were worried about more of the quantities for the asphalt, the excavation, drainage, and all those things versus the yes, human like human mailboxes at the time. Who's the other so we other weren't as concerned human about that, and we should have checked that, but we didn't. Okay, because even though it's like, you know, not a big concern or a big item, it's still $32,000. It's a lot. I understand. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Thank you, sir. Councilmember Garza? Yes, I'm, I'm trying to understand what kind of mailboxes we're getting for $525 a piece. Um, because that seems like, you know, like Dominion style uh, mailboxes for that price. So um, if it's the same ones going down, up and down, uh, what is it, uh, Ben's Engelman, which were all replaced, I mean, there's absolutely no way those mailboxes are getting even <laughs> close to costing that much. So I'm just trying to understand. Uh, I mean, are these like lockable mailboxes? Are they made of steel? Or is there anything special about these mailboxes? No, sir. They're they're the exact same thing that you have on Ben Ziggleman. Okay, so I mean, why why is the price five hundred and twenty-five dollars? There is no way that the pole and the mailbox is costing us that. Well, that's you know, we do not know how the contractors put their bids together. And so they put their cost in different items. And they come up with a total price mm -hmm. for that. And their price for mailboxes was five twenty-five on there. 
And so, you know, of course, their price for other things was different. So comparing prices to prices. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm just again, though, I mean, this seems like a price. like a huge price. I mean, um, you know, last thing I, I will want uh, the community thinking is that here we are just way overspending on these types of uh, these items, you know. And I mean, there's nobody on, on even on Ackerman or Ben Zingelman who believe that their mailboxes are worth five hundred twenty five dollars. So it's just it's kind of one of these runs where, I mean, you know, if it was even half that price, it would make more sense. And I'm sure, you know, we'd be more apt to say, OK, well, you know, there's a little bit of an oversight here, no biggie. But I mean, the issue here is, number one, the massive cost of the mailboxes. Number two, the oversight that we didn't determine that, you know, uh, we only determined for 23 and not not to 84. So um, these are two items of which should have uh, uh, been caught. Even starting this project, I mean, you know, we once we get into it, I mean, we should we should have an idea of of uh, of how many houses or how many mailboxes are taken up. And I mean, as as he was stating, you're absolutely right. I mean, we should have already had it in the plans to replace all mailboxes. It wouldn't have made sense just to replace 23, as you know, most neighbors are going to say, "Why did you know Mike Martin get a new mailbox and and not you know Sally hit?" Uh, you know, so. Um, I just, uh, I really, I mean, you're right about not fighting for prices, but uh, I mean, this just seems excessive. Uh, I'd have to check what the other uh, contractors bid first, what the other contractors bid and then what we had. I don't think we had other, we had mailboxes in our other contract. It, it was, we could check to see what the mailbox price was. <laughs> They're the standard metal mailboxes. Metal riser pole with a with a mailbox mounted to the top of it, which so, is so an item like this. This isn't something that we typically construct. This is the subcontractor item. So we're straight, we're simply taking the quote from the subcontractor and plugging that in. Okay. Have we quoted other subcontractors? See if they could do it for you know less than five twenty five a mailbox. We had a few and we took the lowest. But I can dig into that. I've only been on the job for a week now. Okay, because so. I, I got to tell you, five twenty-five does not seem like the lowest bid to install a mailbox. Yeah. What? Councilman Martin. Yeah, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. I, I, there's no way I, I can approve this. But what I want to ask you is, what if the city purchases the mailbox and the stakes and the poles, and we just pay for the labor? I don't know what that price would be. I'd have to yeah, that's something that, that we can definitely look into. Because the mailbox is max probably 25 bucks. A <laughs> <laughs> uh, pole of 100 bucks. You know, <laughs> yeah, for another 10 or $15. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm sorry. I can't. I can't. You had to come well, back. Was the, was the 20, 23 boxes agreed to that price? To the 525? Yeah. The 23 to, to the five, what? The 23 boxes that was accounted for on the plans originally was that unit price was 525. And that was on the. Yeah, I understand project. what you're saying. Okay. It, it, it's, it's, it's not just fault. No. I understand that. You know, I, what was it? m and &E Engineering? M&S. Yeah, M&S. M&S Engineering. Yeah. Uh, can we? Can you bring this back with the uh, offer? Our other bids, yeah, that would yeah. that would be helpful. I'm sorry, because we'll we'll look into it and get back to you. No, no we're gonna get shot for approving this. I, I can't do it. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so the next eight B discussion and possible action on change order number six, seeking compensation by the Ackerman Road Street. Project contractor Austin Bridge and Road for the additional expenses incurred for off-duty police officers to control traffic in and around the Ackerman Street project in the amount of thirty-eight thousand nine hundred forty-three dollars. I'll let them go first. Oh, yeah, right. Good idea. If I may, can I put a little explanation in there? You're used to seeing Humberto Zambrano up here at these meetings. Humberto had made made it clear that they were done with the payments. There was a payment already submitted that got caught up in the 
backlash here that was there that didn't get taken care of. That's what this that's what this fee is. And that's all that I know about it. Council Member Garza. Yes, I was just going to actually uh, speak to the idea that Alberto had come in here and stated that after we approved the last one, that there would be no more fees for off-duty police officers. Absolutely none. Whether it was something that was an oversight on his part or whatever. Hence the reason why the majority of us actually approved that fee because at first we weren't even told there were going to be off-duty police officers. That's not how it worked out. And then afterwards, you know, when he came back, this is it. After this, this won't come back again. And here it is. So um, I don't. I don't know. I, I you know I feel bad that there was a miscommunication between um, Austin Bridge and Umberto, but uh, he did assure us that this bill would not would not be here, and it's here. So I, I don't. I don't know what you guys would like for us to do about it. And the idea that that he had stated already that we were done paying for off duty police officers. I don't. I can't tell. He 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 just stated that it was already in the works, and it was. That's tight. not what he stated. Uh, the reason for the police officers is for the safety of our workers, for the general public, everybody involved. And so what, what is the city's expectations with the, the safety of the traveling public? Because with Austin Bridge Road, we have the job set up per the traffic plan, the traffic control plan in the spec. So. If you spend an hour out there, there are some serious safety concerns at that intersection that we have the officer at. So what is your expectation? I understand that. Yeah. But I asked, I specifically asked the last time that if we had the opportunity to give us, forget, to give us the opportunity to ask our off-duty police officers to make the money, and he swore he would do that. He would give us the first option to let our officers make that money instead of paying some by the contractor. He didn't do that. Mr. Bain, I know you remember me. We talked talking about, about that. that. And of course, I agree with your interpretation of what Humberto said the other day. It's not an interpretation. Or on there. I, and I'm not disputing any of that on there. I think we did talk about having hiring Kirby's police officers off duty. And the police chief said that they didn't have. They didn't want them doing the off-duty work because it would make them. Well, she never told us that. That's what question. I heard back then. Well, on that. and so that's why that was just that, opportunity. You know, they all have part-time jobs. They all have no, second I, I, jobs. I, I I agree, and that's what happened back yeah. then on there. And of course, you know, this is from from August to November is what okay. this bill is. Of course, okay. y'all have already paid one. That was, How much was we it? show, with the previous change order. That was 60 something. That was change order number three for $36,000. 36, okay. So this is the, so this is additional on top of that. Yeah. It wasn't given to us all at once. Councilmember Garza? Yeah, so, I mean, add it together. At this point, I mean, you're asking, okay, well, what's the expectation? Well, the expectation is that if we're paying a guy to just uh, watch, you know, the road or whatever, a uh, off-duty police officer, and we're paying him at this moment, what is this, $72,000? Is that it? Okay, 75000 with the two change orders. Um what we're really coming, what we're really coming around to is at that point we could have hired a temporary officer. I mean, for half of that, possibly for like fifty grand, we could have hired a guy to just watch the one place for the whole time. He could be paid for the whole year. I mean, this this per, uh, these people that are coming to do this stuff are making more than our than our uh, directors. I mean, this is insane, the amount of money that we're paying in order to just prevent people from driving through that area. And if that's the case, um, I, I truly believe that we, we absolutely could uh, hire somebody to just sit and watch that area. I mean, for $75,000 plus, I, I, I can't imagine there wouldn't be somebody who wouldn't mind just sitting there. So, yeah, so I've been managing jobs here in Texas for a little over 10 plus years. Uh, $60 an hour is standard rate on any textile job. This is the first time that I've ever seen the contractor actually be responsible for any police officer costs. That is always covered. 
under a safety force account always. So yes, you, uh, we, we more than welcome you to hire somebody to come watch that intersection. We don't want any part of it, but we're gonna do everything we can to keep the citizens safe. We're, we're a partner in this project and we're gonna do our due diligence to, to make sure everybody stays safe. So I have a question. So, okay, wait a minute, let's backtrack. Cause I think what we're, might be missing something here. So, because the, this extra is from August 21st, 2023 to November, 2023, correct? So it's nothing moving forward. This is what we're, that's during that time frame. So the additional officer, let's just make this clear. The additional officers, let's say if you put somebody out there now, we're not paying for that as far as what we said before, right? That's what I told us before. Okay, no, 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 but I'm, no, I know, but I'm saying this is from that same time frame of the amount of money. I mean, it's a different amount of money added to it. He's not saying, I just want to make sure everybody's on the same page. We're not talking about paying for somebody right now. We're backtracking. No, this 2023. Is already, you're right. This has already been done. Yeah, that's why I just want to make sure that I don't think everybody's tracking that. This is 2023. So I just want to make sure. Councilmember Garza or who? Wait, Councilmember Lozano. Lozano. Okay, so um, we had paid $36,000 mm -hmm. before, right? And that was also for the month of August through November of 2023 and we're adding 38,000 now is that what it is i'm not sure what that date was i didn't bring that change order of what, what that date was for that first change order that you paid for okay um i think it was prior to that i think it was prior to, I think it was prior to the august 21st okay so um when mr umberto was here um I do recall that he had said after we paid that invoice that he, we would not get billed anymore for the off-duty or the police officer because, uh, one, it was not in our contract and it wasn't necessary to have off-duty police officers or any police officers working that um, area and that they could use a flag person to do that work that was you know, that a police officer was doing for $60 an hour. So now we're saying that that's not the case, that we're billing from August to November, even though he told us that we weren't going to get billed anymore. I mean, honestly, unfortunately, the traveling public does not take us as serious as red and blue lights. It just, it doesn't happen. They'll fly right by us. I've, I've literally stopped them throwing my barricades off the road so they can get through there. Okay. And then the other thing is, um, so I understand it's for safety purposes for not only for for the workers, but for the residents, the community. Yes. Um, but the other thing is it's 612 hours. Uh, do we have like a time? I don't know. Do they like a timesheet, time clock, something that day. says that, yes. That police officer was there for 612 hours for those three signed months. Invoice daily mm -hmm. for the hours worked. Okay. Councilman Martin. Uh, we were just told that she, that they asked the police chief, and she told them that she didn't want her officers working. It. Well, I just got a response from her that they did not ask her. Well, I remember it. I recall at that time when all this was going on in 2023, we were short staffed. And this is when our officers were getting up here saying they had no sleep and they work in they mental health issues and all this other stuff. So I remember at that time, and I do also remember the conversation about the difference between an officer and just a flag person. I do recall that information because we, despite what this is, I think that I, I know I agree with that. A flag person is different from actually an officer. Um, people are going to yeah. say the level of respect is a little different. I, we, I, I get that. Um, but at that time, moving forward, what we said was, um, when I made the statement, even about Bear County, like, you know, I think we can get them for like $50 an hour or something. I made that statement, but no, I'm not, um, our officers at that time was not an option, but the point is what are, so are we basically saying, um, we we're not going to pay the thirty eight thousand. I'm just saying because that's what we need. 
If we're going to say that, we need to do that and move on to the next. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm literally just asking this whole idea of what Humberto is telling us, because the problem is, is everybody's coming back from the same company. But Humberto's not here today to defend what he stated at that time. But I can show you the video. And he stated very distinctly, this would be the last the last time we paid for officers. So at that point, I, I just don't feel comfortable approving this. Yeah, and we've actually accrued over one hundred thousand dollars in cost and we're trying to recruit seventy five. OK, just so we're all on the same page. Well, I understand that. And I appreciate, you know, I, I, we don't always start changing, but yeah, of course. I don't want to be lied to it at the time anyway. I was just told that y'all asked her and she said, no, y'all never said nothing to her. I mean, what am I supposed to do? I got to go with. We, we would much rather be supporting the, the citizens of Kirby, the officers of Kirby, than hiring outside, I assure you. So the information that I gathered is there was no officers from Kirby available. There may not have been, but at least we should have been asked to if we wanted to supply them. Yes, sir. That was the whole deal. Okay. We were, he promised us that we would be at least asked, and we wasn't asked. No. But that was 2020. That was the same time frame. That was already oh. done, though. This was a little bit extra. This no, is, no, I know, but I'm saying around that same, yeah. this is the same. Yeah, this, that's this the is same. Adding, yeah. Yes. Yes, yeah, I know. right now they haven't asked us to do anything because oh, we're I not know. paying no more. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, go ahead. So, one last question. We're not, ever since uh, November of 2023, we're not using any more police officers in that area? Or? I have. No, we, they have been using them. Yes. Yeah. But you're yeah. not since then. Yeah. I have used them since then. So, we're going to oh, continue no. paying that again? No. Okay. All right. Thank you. Right. They've been doing the call. We're not paying for that. Okay. I this is back 2023. Go ahead. One question would be going forward, they're going to need officers off and on. Can they use Kirby police officers to do that work? And whether y'all pay them to do that or they pay them, whatever rate that they agree to, is but, that a possibility? I would prefer flag people. But Mr. Hum, what's his name, Humberto? I call him Humberto. I don't know. He said they would not need no police officer no more that we would have to pay. That y'all that it was covered and y'all's Well, there's well, of course we're gonna be talking about this other change order. When when they're doing the work at Ben Zingelman, they're gonna need a police officer for some of that work because they've got to do work in that intersection. So there is gonna to have to be done some work in there with a police officer at that sure. intersection. Okay. At least when when the time comes, ask our chief to ask our employees. We, please, we, we please, can do give, that. please give them an offer. They might not want to do it. That's fine. But give them the opportunity to make we some extra money. They, they will give them, I, I can't Hold on. Guarantee uh, you well, I don't think we all agree them. on that. Man, wait a minute. Councilman Garza. Yeah, like, um, uh, I want to go back to the idea of flag people. I mean, if, if we're, you know, what we're trying to do is prevent people from going in between. We're talking right where Ben Zingelman is on Ackerman to get to either the VFW or get to Puppy Power. Now, we've been very adamant that if, if the... Uh, if Ben Zingelman, uh, the faster we can get it open between uh, right there at uh, Ackerman going up towards the uh, the park, yep. that if we can get that open, that it'll alleviate the majority of traffic that's trying to get through that area. So, I mean, um, Humberto had stated that he was trying everything to ensure that that was going to open as quickly as possible so we wouldn't have these types of issues. And the whole thing is, is in that I still believe that what's being done with Officers can absolutely be done with flag people. Um, I mean, I, I have to tell you, I, I drive a lot. And um, whenever I get to a two-way run and I see a guy holding a stop sign who, you know, I'm not going to just take off because I'm probably going to run head on with an 18 wheeler. So, I mean, I think the idea, if you put a guy out there has a stop sign, you know, on the slow on the other side, there's, there's a good opportunity that that's not going to happen. But even better, if you open Ben Zingelman going towards the high school, you're really going to alleviate the amount of traffic trying to cut through at any given time. It will only be pretty much restricted to the people who are living in those houses in that area right there. Hence the reason why he was even talking about shutting down the whole street between it was like Ackerman between Ben Zingelman to Cinderella and they would shut it down completely except to residents. But it, but again, in order to do that kind of stuff, it would have to have access to go Ben Zingelman towards the high school. Um, 
that's how that's how this kind of goes. I, I'm not entirely in agreement with Mr. Martin. I believe that this can actually be done with flag people, and I think the faster that we open Ben Zingelman, the quicker and easier this all be for all of us. Okay, so what are we going to do about this $38,943? That's the question. Are we going to vote? We going to make a motion? Is that what you want? Okay. Um, hold on. Where are we? 36000 No, uh, Bravo B. Okay, so uh, I make a motion to approve... Uh, change order number six, seeking compensation by the Ackerman Retreat Road Project, uh, contractor Austin Bridge and Bridge, it's Austin Bridge and Road, uh, for the additional expenses incurred for off-duty police officers to control traffic in the in and around the Ackerman Street Project in the amount of $38,943. Have a second. Nope. nope. Okay. Okay. So, nope. motion died. So then, what? Uh, I guess city attorney would set me. And go to the um, end. That, like uh, Mr. Mina called. Would you say at the very end of the project goes to uh, gonna go in that pool, right? The what? I'm sorry, what's the point? We denied the motion to pay that thirty-eight thousand dollars. Would you call it? We denied something else. You said it maybe at the end of the contract. It'll go in that figure. No, that's different. Okay. Um, the, the, what, what I was talking about is uh, for the overs and unders. Right. And uh, this is not an over and under. Okay. This is a change order that was being submitted for additional uh, uh, compensation for police officers. Uh, originally or previously, we had approved another change order for police officers and said that that was going to be it. Yeah. Exactly. And and. Uh, you know, anything else that would come up was my understanding that the contractor was going to take care of it. Uh, now they want additional funds, right. and I'm not in agreement with that. this. Right. Okay. okay. So um, since we did not agree on that, then what's the next step? So you agreed uh, not to provide the additional funds. Correct. Okay. Then you go to the next item. Okay. Yeah. This is not approved. All right. it, won't get, it, won't get, uh, it won't get paid. It won't get paid. Okay. All right. Moving on to 8C, discussion and possible action on change order number eight, seeking compensation by the Ackerman Road Street Project contractor, Austin Bridge and Road, related to the adjustment of an existing 12-inch water main over a proposed 30-inch RCP as well as the cost for two days, partial closure and two days of off-duty police officers to manage traffic at Ben Zingelman in the amount of $38,251. I'll let you go. I'll let him start first. Okay. We okay. So this is for a problem with a conflict of an existing water main that's in conflict with a proposed storm drain. So it's a existing 12 inch water main uh, cities, uh, Kirby's 12 inch water main that's in conflict with the proposed 30 inch RCP storm sewer on there. So, and to do the adjustment, we were proposing to uh, adjust the water main over the storm sewer on there. And they had originally came up with this price of $38,000 to do that adjustment. We had some questions about it as far as they didn't have some Back up, this is, the price was provided by a subcontractor to Austin Road and Bridge. So it's a subcontractor who's doing that work. They provided this price of the 38,000. Uh, my company had questions about how they came up their price and the materials. And they were supposed to provide additional information before this went before y'all. They didn't provide it until after we had sent, you had kind of set the agenda. The pro two problems, of course, they provide a revised price of $110,000 versus $38,000. So we still don't agree with that on there. And then the second thing is, is we started to, because of the price, we've looked at things that we could might do differently with the plans. 
and that is redesign the plans. So it's uh, a, a 30 inch storm sewer, 12 inch water line. It's about six inches into the yes, proposed, six inches. six inches or so that would fall in the proposed 30 inch storm sewer, the conflict on there. So because of that, we've looked at, we've asked them to verify some elevations downstream, the downstream manhole, and we're looking to see right upstream of this, the proposed is a 24 inch. Of course, as I said before, this is not my design, so it's MS design, so I didn't go through and check calculations. They have a 24 inch just upstream of that section, and it's I think it's because of the gas main. That's exactly why they're trying to do that. Exactly. And of course, you're aware of all the issues we've had with ExxonMobil trying to get a permit and, and being able to install that storm sewer. So now we're going to look at whether we can downsize that line to a 24 inch versus a 30 inch and lower the outfall elevation on there. And we may end up having to rebuild a manhole, downstream manhole that's existing to lower that uh, because the outfall out of that manhole is a couple of feet. So we might be able to do that instead of doing this adjustment. This adjustment of 38,000, I thought was high in the first place. And then for the 110,000, it's really high. So that's why we're looking at different alternatives. <coughs> so I would really ask you to table this item, but I want to answer any questions that y'all have now and the contractor can answer questions uh, about the issue. This was an existing water line that whatever was not potholed and not shown as far as accurate elevation on the plans and that adjustment should have been taken care of before it, but it hasn't when we come up with that. Councilman Person. Yes, where exactly is this? At the corner of Ben Zingleman and Ackerman. Okay. So so right there we're on the on the Kirby's uh food market side. Oh, okay. So um even if this did happen, I mean would uh would we have to extend where the road closures are even as of now? Or would people still be allowed to drive down Ackerman, take a left on Ben Zingelman to go back down towards the uh, back toward yeah. yes, 78? Yes. Basically. Okay. But, but you'd have to do work in the intersection since yeah. in the price there is a fee for doing having off duty police officers for yeah. a couple of days, but they were I was noticing that but, but you know, it was going to be included because of the work in the intersection. Yeah. You got to be able to and that's the reason why I was asking. I mean, if it's in the middle of the intersection, I can completely understand that type of stuff. I mean, because people aren't used to driving around that area type thing. But I mean, if it's. It would shift the traffic over to the one shoulder up, up against. Okay. And then flag them three ways through that intersection. I get you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So we table this? Yes, they have asked us to. Okay, so thank you. Oh, next. Sorry. All right, the next one is eight D discussion and possible action on change order number nine seeks compensation by the Ackerman Road Street Project contractor Austin Road and Bridge for skewing of an existing PVC water line around junk junction boxes on N B Ackerman Road, starting at junction box A three in the amount of $25,942. Uh, this is another one we're gonna ask you to table. Uh, we were asking for clarification from the subcontractor on some of his prices, like we were asking for clarification on the first one. Uh, this is an issue, another existing water line that is in conflict with the junction boxes. It's and it's moving. It's not in the straight line. Is that correct? That's correct. On there, so it's kind of moving in the in in the roadway, not moving, but it the, the alignment not alignment is not straight on there. So it's it's pushing into where the proposed junction boxes are. Mm -hmm. And originally they were proposing to just adjust the water line around each junction box versus readjusting all the water line. It's AC. No, sir. This is PVC. This is PVC. This is PVC. Previously, we have AC replacement adjustments. But this is PVC that we would be adjusting around each of those uh, junction boxes. Uh, we are also looking at whether 
and one reason, another reason why we're table, one reason to table it because we need clarification on the price, more backup. Second reason is we're looking is if we move the proposed storm sewer over a little bit, we're going to get closer to the standard deer sewer, existing standard deer sewer. The issue with that is, and this is what we need to talk to the city public works guy, is that if you have to work on that sanitary sewer, you're gonna have kind of potential an issue with the storm sewer kind of in the way trying to dig down to if you have to fix the sanitary sewer. So how close can you get the storm sewer to the existing sanitary sewer? And that's what we're gonna look at and work with the contract and see if we can move it over a couple feet so we can get a couple feet away from the existing water line with the junction box. So that's why I'm asking you to table that. I, I didn't really kind of want this on there, but it's good to bring it before the council and let you know what we're talking about and, and possible redesign for that. Okay, thank you. Oh, would you go? Ahead. Is that a vote? No, no we no. just the next one. Yeah. We got to table it. I thought we had to vote to table it. No. no. Okay. Uh, uh, right, we don't have to vote to table it. Right? Um, uh -huh. Yes, you do. We do? Yeah. Well, we just didn't do it for the uh, last I'll do them one. both. I'll do them both. Well, it would be no action. Uh, well, you don't need to vote for no action. But if you want to table it, you need a vote because that way it goes back on the agenda. But we post, we've post. we moved stuff before without a vote. No? Yeah. I mean, we have. Is it, is it, I'm saying we have. Okay, was it? Uh, I mean, agenda it, items that we decided we're to, not going to. To vote on right, yeah. Okay. More information. We've moved it to the net, and no, we had no vote. Yes, you could do Is that. that. Okay? Yes, okay. Yes, you could do that. Just want to make sure. Yes. All right. I do have a question, Member. Go ahead, uh, Mr. Bain. Uh, what what you're explaining to us is that uh, you're you're trying to see if you have enough room with the storm drain to move it closer to the sewer line, and still have enough uh, room to be able to work on the sewer line in the future, and uh, you're trying to get uh, data on that. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. On there is just, all right uh, enough there. to be able to get the water line where you don't have to move it, and also move this uh, proposed storm drain uh, or the junction box where it's not in conflict with the existing sewer that's right. there. Okay, I just wanted to go. Thank you. That's it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to Mayor? eight. Yes. Uh, can I make a motion that we move? Uh, uh, like all the uh, senior center stuff together. Uh, would it be possible to move up K before E so that we discuss it first? Because it makes more sense uh, to discuss the agreements before we discuss actually trying to... Uh... Make the motion. Okay. Mayor, I make a motion that we move items K and L prior to uh, E um, for the Kirby Senior Center. A second. Have a motion to move K and L prior to AE regards to the senior center. First by Councilmember Garza, seconded by Councilmember Martin. Please call roll. Councilmember Lazama? Yes. Councilmember Yes. Councilmember Yes. Councilmember Yes. 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 Okay, so we'll start with uh, 8K. Is that what it is? Uh, yeah. Discussion and possible action on the Kirby Senior Center Management Service Agreement with the City Resolution R 2023-759. Councilmember Garza. Okay, um, so we previously discussed, uh, the City Attorney has gave, given legal advice Thing that uh, there has not been any conflicts of interest as far as uh, members sitting here on council as well as on the senior center board. Um, but uh, as I was given the um, the articles of incorporation and the uh, um, the bylaws, once I started reading into that, they actually gave a uh, they gave a. Uh, like Texas code to look into. And it was stating that basically um, that this could be done, you know, as long as it wasn't in conflict with Texas code section 171.004, which is basically 
uh, a determination on whether things are conflicts of interest um, with the uh, you know the Texas Code. So um, just to kind of give a background, the way that this actually works out, it states that uh, affidavit and abstention from voting required. A, if a local public official has substantial interest in a business entity, that uh, the official shall file um, an affidavit saying the nature, the extent, and the interest shall abstain from further participation in the matter. If, and then it says, in case of a substantial interest in a business entity, the action on the meeting will have a special economic effect on the business entity that is distinguishable from the effect on the public. So it goes back down to define um, what that what that means. Um, and when you start to read through it, it actually will state that a public official means a member of the governmenting body, which we can agree we're all public officials. And it says municipality, just in case we're, we're, we're unaware of it. And then it talks about business entity, and it says means a sole propriety, partnership firm, or corporation, which is what the senior center is. Now, it states the only way that you can have a substantial interest is if the person owns 10% or more of the voting stock. Now, with only five members of um, the uh, senior center board, that means that each one of you owns a 20% share of voting stock. By having a 20% share of voting stock, it would affect voting on a budget. The governing body of the governmental entity shall take a separate vote on any budget item specifically dedicated to a contract with the business entity in which a member of the governing body has a substantial interest. So it's basically stating that um, that if you guys wanted to uh, vote on the on any budgeting aspect of the uh, senior center, that it would have to be something where you could vote for the full budget, but you'd have to take out the portion that was uh, that was for the uh, senior center. And then you wouldn't, since you have a 20% stake in voting on that, you would have to allow the people who don't to be the ones to vote. Also, it says an effective violation of the chapter. It says finding by the court of a violation under this chapter does not render an action of the governmental body voidable. So in other words, it's not completely void for the votes that you guys have already made, unless the measure that was the subject of an action involving a conflict of interest would not have passed the governing body without the vote of the person or people who violated the chapter. So basically that's saying if, uh, if the vote wouldn't have passed without you guys voting on it, then um, it wouldn't have mattered. But if it wouldn't have passed had you guys not voted, then that renders it on basically an illegal vote. So um, this is local government code, Title V, Chapter 171, and um, basically it states it all right here. So I don't know why our lawyers have been giving us all these uh, ideas that we're allowed to be on both and vote for both, but we should have known that there was some type of conflict of interest when we could have easily voted for things that were going on at the senior center, but also voted for them here at council. I knew that there was something that wasn't right about it, but this absolutely states it. So oh, city wait, attorney. City attorney <laughs> that's, that's not a correct interpretation at all. It means financial interest by the individual member into the uh, company or corporation. It's it, it That's not a correct interpretation. Well, sir, if you read it, it doesn't say anything about financial interest? Yes, I've, I've read it before. It, okay, well, good, but, but it but doesn't it, say anything but, about but financial it's not, interest. But it's not an interpretation. That's not the correct interpretation. Okay, Council Member Martin. Yes, ma'am. I have a problem. Uh, Ms. Gomez, will you take the podium? How you doing tonight? Uh, the question I have is with uh, the resolution that was signed by uh, you and um, Dr. Rollins. Mm -hmm. I understand the city gave him authority to sign a contract with the senior center. But did the board give you permission to sign a contract for the senior center? When only the board president and vice president can sign a contract for the senior center. So I, what I want to know is, were you pressured or do you feel pressured into doing anything out of the ordinary? Or Because you was on the board prior, so you've read, you read the bylaws and articles of cooperation. So you knew what you were signing, right? To clarify, I was on the board for less than three months, and I was never given the articles of incorporation or bylaws until I took over the senior center. But, you, but, you, but to answer your question about feeling pressured, no. Okay. So, so you, I thought I was doing the right thing. But you did uh, sign the contract. Yes, I mean you see it right there. And that's right. And you 
became executive director in May, right? May 2023. Nine in August. Three months. And you didn't read the articles of cooperation in three months that you were executive director? If you go back and read the video or listen to the video I said when I was in the board, I didn't. I wasn't given the articles of incorporation or the bylaws. So you've been running the center <laughs> this whole time, not knowing uh, bylaws and Sir, articles. Sir, if you listen, I said when I was a board member, I wasn't given the articles of incorporation or the bylaws. I understand that. I understand. But what you're you implying said. that as an executive director. I didn't read them or I didn't know. I'm asking you. I'm telling you I, I did okay. as an executive director. So why did you sign the contract? And the contract. And you didn't think nothing about it being illegal against the charter, against the, against the bylaws or nothing? What can I say? Well, the uh, reason I'm asking you this is because you filed a complaint against Dr. Roland too, and I don't know what your problem have. That's why I'm asking if you felt pressured. No, my complaint regard against him was his leadership style. Okay. Nothing to do with that. Okay. Um, this was drafted by... I, I, under, I understand. So... Legal, because that's what they normally allude to. But it Something illegal. But... Um, her name is on there. This was drafted by her um, attorney's office. Any other questions with this? Go ahead. Uh, yeah. This isn't for you. Um, another thing that I did have an issue with on some of these things is with the takeover of the senior center to begin with, there was actually a email that I received that said from the city attorney that I want to present counsel for the city to take over the senior center. I would like the seniors in eight to three and three to six open to everyone, basically a community center. I want less disruption as possible. So what steps would we need to take? Um, and would we have to close for a month or two? I was hoping there would be some way for this to keep senior center going during this transition. Now, this was something that was written on June 2nd of 2023, which was prior to the takeover of the senior center. And um, Denton and Navarro ended up coming out and stating very distinctly that um, to aid and assist, this is what they end up telling everybody at the end. The purposes for which a corporate corporation is uh, organized this is as follows state and assist on, on behalf of the city in accomplishing a governmental purpose of a city or I'm sorry, this was, these are the bylaws. I'm looking for the one that was from the, uh, from the, from Den Navarro. So Den Navarro basically comes out and says in an effort to, uh, to, to help in taking over the senior center and they kind of go on this line. However, I will say that in doing all this, they did ask for an open records request for all of Dent Navarro's, um, the, all their billing. And at the beginning, when I asked for it, I asked for it in my unofficial capacity. One of the first things they did was they redacted all of that, uh, that uh, setting. So they redacted anything that had anything to do with the senior center. By doing so, what it ended up doing was it ended up basically preventing which, I mean, didn't make any sense because there was no contracts. It was nothing of legalities. It wasn't any personal to the attorney. Um, and particularly, uh, it should have been disclosed to the rest of us that these were the intentions. As these intentions actually go um, entirely against the Articles of Incorporation for the Senior Center, as well as their um, bylaws. So uh, it states very distinctly, and unfortunately, this is the problems that I feel that we're having with Denton Navarro. Oh, here it is. It says, uh, I'm going to address as many of the issues that we need to address to accomplish the mayor's goal of bringing the senior center citizens programming and center into direct control of the city. So basically, this all started because what we were trying to do was get uh, the senior center to be in direct control and to become a community center. Now, if you read the Articles of Incorporation, it states that um, it is to aid and assist on behalf of the city in accomplishing the governmental purpose of the city by establishing a senior citizen center for educational, recreational, health, nourishment programs to benefit senior citizens. It does not mention anything about anything else. Um, then there were a few things that had been kind of bypassed but um, it does come to state in Article 10 that no director shall be liable to the corporation for monetary damages for an act or omission in the director's capacity or as director. So in other words, as Mr. Romans was stating, that somebody will be liable for the debt. And it says that no one here will be liable for the debt unless 
for any breach of the director's duty or loyalty to the corporation for acts of omission or not in good faith. So, I mean, with trying to take over the senior center to move it is into a uh, community center would con be considered an act of omission and not in good faith, which uh, involve intentional misconduct or known violation of law. So, I mean, they, um, it was all started in what, June? Before we decided we were gonna kick off the board members and take it over, it was already being discussed with the lawyers and decided that this is exactly what was going to happen. And that goes to show that there was already bad faith to begin with and that the board members were not acting in the best faith of the senior center, but to dissolve it. Of which now we are in a situation of which we're going to try to ask the, uh, you know, our city manager to do so. Um, but it's but it's all being done in, in in this really secretive kind of like ancillary. We'll get with the lawyers and let's figure out how to do this around everybody kind of way. I mean, if this was in the intent, you know, then <laughs> there was a time I remember where I was actually told, you know, that it was uh, un unbecouth of me to uh, state that this is what was actually going on. And now I have paperwork that proves it. And like I'm stating, it, it is going against the Articles of Incorporation. And because it was done, doesn't, I mean, it honestly doesn't mean that you guys should be able to take over the senior center. It doesn't mean that you should be able to dissolve it. Um, it was all done. It was all done with bad intent. And I mean, it's, it's proven by, by this. So um, I understand I, I, um, your wording is interesting. Um, so the stuff has been going on with the senior center has been going on since I think 2017 or 19. It's been going on for over and over and over. Um, even back then, nobody actually had the, you know what, to actually make it happen. Um, to with the the mishandlings of funds and this and that and everything that's been going on with the senior center. Um, it's been going on for a long time. Yes, I made it very vocal from any time anybody has ever talked to me or heard anything. Um, I said, yeah, it would be great for the senior center to be um, a community center um, in the future. We don't even have a director for youth programs or anything like that. So yes, at the beginning, of course, right now, it still would be the seniors, they come in, I think, um, is it eight to about three o'clock from my understanding? That's the time frame to four, eight to four. That's the time frame that they come in. Yes, in the future plans, of course, yeah. But also you have to ask the question of how would this stuff go about? Because one thing that everybody kept mentioning at the time when I was mentioning, when y'all were going around circling, disputing, um, uh, false facts of what I was saying and my intentions that I wanted to kick out grandma and uh, that all this other stuff y'all were going around saying that was definitely not the case. Um, we needed to know exactly how things were done because at that time also was stating that the transition process, um, even for we've heard citizens get up here when they talk about the senior center, it's almost like, um, what do you call it? Uh, like putting fear in making that move. Oh, it's going to be $300,000. Oh, the, the, the thing's going to take six, seven months. You know, like throwing things out there that is not factual. The CBDG, throwing stuff out there that's not fact. And matter of fact, one of the citizens who got up and spoke about that at the time, they were actually on council at the time, so they know that it's not the case. The five years is over with. So my the point is, with this resolution, our city attorney already stated that there is nothing wrong with this resolution. So do we have anything else for this one? I do. Go ahead. Okay. Um, one last thing that also um, uh, did come to mind here were a lot of the violations of the Articles of Incorporation as well as the bylaws. And if you start reading through some of these things, there are a lot of things of which the current board has not done, um, which um, also has not given a opportunity for anybody else to join the board um, so that you guys can have nine members. But... Um, also, when we were discussing the idea of dissolution, it says here that, um, well, here, let me go by a couple of them. The president and vice president shall be chosen from the members of the board of directors, which when I was immediately thrown onto that board, that, that didn't happen. They basically just gave everybody jobs, and uh, Mr. Martin immediately got the job of treasurer and decided to uh, resign. And then it says... Um, 
here it talks about the president may sign and execute all contracts, conveyances, franchise, bonds, deeds, assignments, mortgages, notes, and other instruments in the name of the corporation, which also goes against the idea of the executive director signing the documentation. Um, but also it's the same idea here with, uh, within our, uh, you know, within our city that allows the mayor to sign that type of stuff. But I get it. You know, you can't sign the same document twice because as I was sitting before, it's a conflict of interest. Um, so, I mean, there, there are those issues as well, but, um, if you do read on the main parts of this, it will tell you that, uh, that there is some, that the debt will have to be, uh, it will have to be gone prior to dissolution. Okay. If you do read in, in the articles of corporation, it states, uh, let me see where it's at. It states, hold on. Well, here it says the board shall make a recommendation to the council for a qualified person person to be appointed uh, no less than 60 days prior to the expiration of the internal office of a director or as soon as possible after a vacancy occurs, of which, like I said, there's no means for anybody to actually join the board. Um, but does this have, so what else about the resolution? Yes, yes, because, yes, yes. I, mean, I know, one, well, hold on, hold on. One, yeah, I get it. Well, okay. one, I get you. One, oh, one last okay. thing, okay. It, does, it does state about, uh, it's going to be in the articles, or, or the bylaws, it states that um, that the debt will have to be paid. And once the, you know, uh, the people in charge of the debt, um, that, the, it can't that it can't dissolve until the debts are paid and that they have to be placed on the current board at the moment. That's how it's supposed, that's how it states. So, I mean, what we can't do is we can't um, dissolve the senior center and, and just ha expect that the city takes on the debt. Um, you know, realistically, I still don't agree with the uh, with what the city attorney has allowed us to do in this situation. But um, at the same time, as well, it still goes against a lot of the things that um, that are even in in their own uh, bylaws. So, I mean, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of issue with this, and I, I think it needs to be addressed prior to you know to anything anything happening. Mayor, call for the question. This is repetitive. Done, that's all the question then you take the uh, that uh, okay. part of the question uh cuts off the discussion okay so they need to if somebody wants to make a motion they need to do it or are we moving on no you yeah you you cut discussion with regard to of, of the item then you just vote on it okay yeah make a first a second Oh, for the call for the question you mean. Yeah, call for the question means you stop the vote. Right. And then you vote. Vote well, on what nobody's okay. Somebody has to make a motion and we have a vote Do we have do I make a motion? Yeah, you make a motion. Okay. You get second. Yeah. Mary, make a motion that we stop this discussion. I second it. Second Sally. <laughs> okay. Excuse me? Nothing. Okay. Point of order, it's your first warning. Okay, so we have a motion to um, move on first by, from this agenda item 8K, first by Mayor Pro Tem Apodaca, seconded by Council Member Hitt. Please call roll. Council Member Martin? No. Council Member Molina? Yes. Council Member No. Council Member Yes. Um, I would like more information, like the copies of the paperwork that Council Member Garza had. You have uh, it. No, there was some information on there regarding some emails or something that I don't have. Uh, so it should it come in our last? Uh, it was because it came in our last agenda packet. Okay. So so just to um, kind of give you an idea. So so no. Yes. Yes. Okay. So moving on now to eight. 
going on so much on it. Okay. L. L. Discussion and possible action on the removal of city council members from the Kirby Senior Center Board. Again, council member Garza. Do you want to repeat everything you just said? I know, but okay. I would like to state that it, as uh, as it does state, I mean, our, our lawyers, listen, um, I have to tell you, like, even when it was Valerie, she came back here and said one time that we couldn't make a motion in order to allow people to speak, which violates our charter. Uh, it doesn't just, it's not just a, a no, but it does violate the charter. And that's why I'm saying, like, um, unfortunately, Denton Navarro has in multiple cases given us bad advice. And the problem that I'm having is, as uh, we're being told right now, that the local government code title five, chapter 171, has absolutely nothing to do with this situation. But um, it, it very clearly defines what conflict of interests are, what a business entity is, what a corporation is, what a public official is. It, it clearly defines it. And unfortunately, it may not be the fit of which our lawyers want to decipher, but I'm telling you, this local government code, um, as as members, you guys have a 20% voting share, and I, I, don't, I don't believe that uh, you should have the ability to vote on anything having to do with the senior center, unfortunately. Eric, call for the question, repetitive. Uh, actually, we opened up a new... We opened up a new, yeah, so I mean, there's no, it's not repetitive. But you're repeating what you already said. Well, yeah, but from the last agenda item. Um, I do have questions. Um, so uh, my understanding when we first uh, took over the Kirby Senior Center Board was that we were going to be on there temporarily until we got um, residents or individuals to fill in for the board. And I, I agree, I, we haven't done that. It's been, I think it says 60 days and we still haven't done, done that. It's been way over that. Um, so I do have questions in regards to the Title V, Chapter 171. Um, so I would like further clarification, I guess, from our attorneys into what you know, you are saying that that doesn't apply or it's the interpretation versus Mr. or Council Member Garza's interpretation. And then the other thing is uh, just an example of like right now when a motion was made to stop uh, further discussion, um, how does that not go against like a, conf a conflict of interest if we're stopping the discussion of our Kirby Senior Center, but yet we're over here and saying, let's, we don't want to discuss this any further. It kind of, for me, it's a, con for me, it does, it's, it is a conflict in that essence. Uh, and the other thing is, okay. and I'm sorry, one sure. more. Um, if there is a dissolution of the, of the Senior Center, my understanding is that it can only whatever monies or whatnot assets or uh, could only be used for housing, low income housing. Is that correct? Is that how it would work? Oh. Oh. To answer your questions, if I could answer the, the questions that you had. The uh, calling for the question is from Robert's Rules of Order that, that uh, the discussion has gone long enough. The chair uh, will entertain a motion to call the questions, which means put it for a vote. And that's just Robert rules of order. With regard to the disillusionment, it's a process. You can't just, it's not like you just call for disillusion and it happens. No, you have to, as mentioned, uh, resolve the debt. And there's two or three processes you go before it is uh, dissolved. Once it's dissolved, then the city can move on to uh, make that a different department or whatever. But there is a process of, of disillusionment. It's not automatic or happens right away. You can begin the process, but steps, you know, one, two, three have to be done before it's finally dissolved. Okay, so uh, would that have, would that need to be brought up to our Kirby Senior Center board so that our residents can come and voice their opinions or no, it, like before it even comes to us here, mm -hmm. the dissolution, does it have to go to our 
through our Kirby Senior Center Board. Hmm. No, the, the, the council is the, the board. And so it's the council that makes the, uh, the, uh, the motion or the resolution to do that. And it's voted on and that begins the dissolution process if they choose to do that. And there was another the, question that the you housing, had. The housing. I think it, yeah, you're, it's, uh, it does have that housing requirement, I believe. Uh, but that's again in the process of disillusionment. So it's uh, if that's a requirement, then yeah, that's a requirement, and it is a requirement. Yeah. And go ahead. Yeah, in, in the charter uh, section two eight prohibitions, a is holding other offices except when authorized by law. No mayor or council member should you know any other city office or city employment during his term as mayor or council member. And no former mayor or council member should hold any compensation appointments to a city office or employment until one year after expiration of the term. So what it's saying is we cannot be on another board. That's why I, that's why I resigned as soon as you appointed me. It states in the charter that you can't do it. That's why I'm saying we need to get off the board. I, I don't want you to get off right now. Because I don't want to, I don't want the Kirby Senior Center shutting down. If you dissolved it right now, they're going to shut down. They got to have to have a board to run to operate. That's but when we get to that item, we'll discuss that because it's a process. It's not just it's okay. simple. It's going to take months before well, that gets resolved. That, but so and also just to the point out, Councilmember Lozano's point um, about yes, other board members. Now I ask several citizens would they join all of our boards matter of fact i think i even <laughs> was telling mayor pro tim i don't want to be on the kirby senior center board anymore the problem is is that we don't have anybody that we can trust the books are whack i'm just, i'm being too honest and most of them don't even want to do it everybody i've asked they said no they were the like we don't want to touch it said, what about the ones you kicked off they were doing they were working their butt off there wasn't even a, okay, let's don't go there. So, I mean, we, we found out more information after that. Did you know about press and all that? Probably not. Yes, oh, well, well, thanks for letting us know. No wonder they were hiding the reports. Okay, so again, there's a lot of things that was going on that that's why nobody wants to be on there. I've asked a lot of citizens. I probably asked about six different people from every single board or commission in this city. They don't want no part of it just because of the normal mess we have in our city. But also on top of that, they really don't want any part of with the mess they know that's been going on with the senior center. Granted, I mean, they're probably, I mean, I was actually kind of didn't even want to be on the, uh, the a check signer myself just because we don't know what's been going on. I mean, let's be honest. There's a lot of stuff that has been going on, the selling of the bus and all this other stuff that we keep now, like every time that we have there's meetings or anything that happens, the news gets worse and worse. <laughs> There's things that we discover that everything wasn't roses as everything we're trying to make it seem. So, yes, I have asked people now. Maybe you have not. I know I've asked several people for every single board and they have turned me down. I've asked prior elected. Everybody pretty much says H. No, they don't want to touch it. And let's I'm just saying I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Councilman Molina. Uh, I, I agree with you, Mayor, because I get the same kind of uh, feeling and, and, and response, and it all starts right here. You know, we're, we're uh, up here trying to uh, discuss something, and right away, oh, no, that's not true, or oh, no, this is not going on. You know, we, we really need to be uh, professional about that, about everything that we do, and start calling uh, us out one another about, no, you can't do this, and you can't do that, and you're going to dissolve this and dissolve that. You know, come on, guys. We need to get people to trust us and want to come on to the boards to try to help us out. Uh, we're, we're doing the best we can with everything that's been situated up here. You know, it's funny that we can't find any of the paperwork to do the audits that we're missing. Uh, you know, but everything's okay. I mean, you know, the, the previous people were doing a great job. That's what we hear from some people up here. We, we were, they were not, and we weren't getting the things done right, uh, correctly. So come on, guys, let's let's be adults and let's try to work out together, not try to point fingers or anything. We need information. OK, let's try to find the information that needs to be done, like the, the these uh, uh, rules that uh, Los Angeles asked for. 
you know, we need to go look them up then and, and try to work this. But keep on hagging this out over and over and keep saying the same thing. It's not get resolving anything. We need to move on from this. Councilman Regarza. Um, just to speak to uh, Mr. Molina's point, um, it's, it's a little hard to trust the idea of everybody up here when there's actual emails and stuff from the city attorney stating um, the opposite, that this was to be taken over to become a community center. I mean, it's in black and white, and I already have the paperwork. But not to mention, we also have it here where the uh, city attorney also stated that the board is the council that we're all one being, but we're not because uh, Mr. Martin and myself are not part of that board. So the decisions that we make are ancillary from the board. So if we decide that the uh, senior center should receive $10,000 to help pay for something, it, it isn't because we've also decided as board members that the senior center was in need of these things that we should have brought to the, to the council. Uh, it, it should not all be one entity. Um, but it also states here in the bylaws that all other matters pertaining to the internal affairs of the corporation shall be governed by the bylaws of the corporation, so long as the bylaws are not inconsistent with these articles of incorporation or the laws of the state, of which it's it's in black and white that it that it is. Even section one, uh, what is it, section, chapter 171 of the Texas Local Government Code is in the code of conduct for mayor and council members. It, that's how I found it. I looked in our own charter. I didn't just find it out of nowhere. It states how it can be a, uh, a conflict of interest. And, and, and that's, that's why I'm saying, I mean, here we go again, where we're, we're taking things too far and we're just trying to say like, you know, oh, let's all just get along. But the problem is, is, is the trust has to go in all, all directions. It's, it's a little, it's hard to trust it if we weren't told from the beginning in the get go what we were trying to do. And um, and we have paperwork that clearly states what those intentions were. That was my intention. So what, what do you mean? It, I'm not. It was your that. intention. I've never said. It's I right have here. publicly said. I just said that. I have publicly stated. June second. I think everybody in Kirby knows. I have publicly stated that in the future, I would like to see a community center, eight to three, senior centers during the day. The other time, the center's not being used. It should be for youth or such. That matter of fact. Ms. Gomez, if you would please step up. Who asked to take When over. we had an information, um, when we had a meeting um, that I had to take because our former ICM wasn't doing anything, um, I had to take with ACOG. Did he not even talk about a program about with seniors and youth? There is out there centers that do things like that. Mm -hmm. This is not something new. And even when we went to the, um, uh, the town hall over here at the Calvary Baptist Church, they were talking about a generational center. That is nothing crazy. The kids are going to be in school during those time frames. That's nothing. It's not. I don't understand. It's not nothing shady or anything. Um, number one, we don't have a director for that. Yes, I stated that. Of course, I would like a community center. I've stated that. Everybody knows that. It's very it's not, distinct. It's not. It's not nobody's hiding anything, but also I would like to ask the city attorney this question because I have brought this up and I spoke to other elected officials in other cities. And when I bring up this point about the senior center, which is um, they find interesting that other cities do the same thing. If there is not a board, the council steps in. Is that not correct? Uh, that's correct, and statute allows the council to do that. But we had a board. There was a board. He, he, got, he kicked them off. Yeah. But they were okay. Let's let's wait till we go to E. We're going to reveal some things, and we'll okay. see that the yeah. board wouldn't have lasted. Hold How on, that'll that? be great. Yeah. But but just before we move on, just one last that. one last thing. Um, it does actually come from Dan Santee on June second. After you do write him to uh, see about taking it over. Because it literally says, take over the senior center. And then he comes back and talks about, I'm going to try to address as many of the issues that we'll need to address to accomplish the mayor's goal. Not the council's goal. Not the city's That's goal. Why. It's the mayor's goal oh, to bring the senior citizen programming and center into direct control of the city. So the thing is, is that the rest of us weren't informed of this. I mean, you know, that's that's the thing is like, you know, a lot of times uh, it's pressed on this idea that, you know, we all knew that the ladies in the office 
couldn't read or whatever. And it's like, no, I didn't hire them. I didn't know any of that. As a matter of fact, I was thinking to myself, like, where did that come out at the, uh, at the retreat that I was kicked out at? Cause I had no clue. And then when you're sitting here saying, well, I, you already had an, uh, to know that I was trying to move it in there. No, I didn't. And when I started to ask for these open records, I never received them because they were being redacted by our own attorneys. So I wasn't being, I wasn't being given the opportunity to understand what we were trying to do. The idea that started this was that we were going to try to uh, do the senior center. This was the idea that was coming up here is that you guys are going to try to take over the senior center to fix it, to help it. But according to this, that, that wasn't the goal at all. And we have the emails from the attorney and your email to prove it. I'm not disputing that. I mean, everybody, like I said, again, has heard me say this in public and everywhere else. And for you to state and sit here and say that you had no idea those are intentions that can't possibly be true because people even at the seniors at the senior center said that two of you sitting up here basically stated that I was trying to kick them out and shut the center down. So that's what was going that. on. Who, who told you that? Let, let's just. OK. I'm just saying, I mean, who said that? Was it Michelle? Director Gomez, please step forward. Can you please? Am I lying that there is? I mean, come on. Who told you that? They're not going to say the name, so you can start harassing them. I'm not like going to harass anybody. But I just—I mean, we could easily we say that anything. Please. Go, please answer the question. Can Can you repeat the question, please? Is it not true that there was certain council members sitting up here at the senior center? Was it not true going around at the time that I was trying to kick out Grandma? And shut the center down. That was the narrative being pushed. Thank you. And that I wanted to turn into community center to kick out grandma. That mm -hmm. was the narrative that was going around. Very leading question. <laughs> no, that is it's the truth. It's a, it's a leading question. Though. Okay, so. Go ahead. So are we done with this one? We can move on. Do you have any more questions? Anybody. And then also another thing up here too. Everybody sitting up here, you have these. Uh, this has been on the agenda Mayor, for I don't know how many times. I would like to make this public record. Times. I don't. I don't know how we do that. It's yeah, part of my notes now, I, I guess. Know. So yeah, and we ever, all, I think all council members should, as well as the public, so we know exactly what the intent was. Because yes, you, I know you. I know you believe that everybody knows, but I, I didn't know. And and it, that part really. I've heard you say that I wanted to make it a community center. Yeah, that so was what, that, that was that was the idea of what you had kind of like alluded to, but you never actually said take over the senior center and make it a community. Okay, center. you're trying to do the work. I'm not playing the games with you. Okay, so let's move on. Let's move on. Okay, so that one's done. Now we're gonna move to eight e. Public hearing, discussion, and possible action directing the interim city manager to proceed with legal guidance to dissolve the nonprofit Kirby Senior Center and board and discussion and action on the creation of a city department to be assigned under the city of Kirby city manager for a physical year 2025. Now, the reason why all this discussion is coming up is because if everybody might not be aware of the history, um, Matter of fact, if the council did not take over the board, right after that, there was a lot of issues that were happening. Um, the AC unit, for example, um, uh, as we know, the refrigerator that we actually did vote on, that's still not even fixed. The refrigerator and the freezer, that's not even fixed. Um, other things, the, the water, like so many stuff has happened. There is no money. They would have been shut down already. It would have been shut down, period done 100% it would have been we already know also every single week I mean every single meeting there is new information that comes out that gets worse and worse of things that were mishandled things that were um that I, I assume that since you guys some of you sitting up here was there all the time maybe you were aware but we weren't aware that there was all this uh with the press of contract because that was actually asked and at first, the director, do you want to step forward and explain? Thank you. So with the press contract, that took place. I had a meeting with the, um, the then CEO of uh, Pressa, and she indicated what, what happened was the board decided to cancel the contract because they weren't getting any information. 
I believe at the time what she said was their information was coming from the news so that, you know, they were trying to figure out what, what was all the turmoil and everything going on. They had reached out to the then board president on a few occasions to get some information. They were never provided with any information. So the board took a vote and decided to cancel the contract. Now there's three months of from 2022, which totaled to 70. I do also want to point out, because there seems to be concerns at no place there. Um, so I had our bookkeeper look into rental history, because that seems to be where it stemmed from. And so I asked him to go back five years on rental income that was um, reported. October 1st to 2017 to September 30th of 2018. Let me preface this with all the seniors advising that the center has always been rented on multiple occasions every single year. But for um, October 17 to September 18, $280 was reported in rental income. October 18 to September of 2019, a little bit more, 775. Just to kind of break that down, it boils down to maybe two rentals. October of 2019 to September of 2020, 525. October 1st of 20 to September of 21, keep in mind this is COVID when the center was shut, zero. October 21 to September of 22, $420. October 1st of 22, September 30th of 23, 875. 90% of that is when I took over. October 1st of 23 to now, $2,250. Not including two recent rentals that have to be added. So we have, even our bookkeeper says it's a little bit surprising. Asked for reasoning behind it. Three reasons. Either it was being reported in a different line item, but then he says, that's bad accounting. Two, maybe they didn't get that rentals. But according to everybody around there, they've been renting. Or three, cash wasn't reported. Simple as that. That was going on. Now, to make clear, the debt that's incurred now in regards to PRESA was previous, right? Payroll taxes from 2023. No choice. Couldn't pay it. No incoming besides ACOG and VIA. No grants were applied for. No additional funding. PRESA was a pretty large contract. It was uh, 132000 I believe, last look. 99% of it was spent towards salaries as opposed to programs for the senior center or the seniors themselves. So I just want to clarify some of those things that, you know, probably weren't out there in the public in regards to it. I don't like to air dirty laundry, but there it is. So unfortunately, we're at the point where we're at because things weren't taken care of in the past. Can and you I, please um, talk to them about Mills on Wheels? Because I don't think the public was aware that um, how we had to basically beg Meals on Wheels about the contract because of... So apparently it's been an ongoing issue with Meals on Wheels always being paid late, very late. And so when I took over, you know, I needed some time to transition, get everything straight um, with very little funding coming in. Uh, they canceled, they um, advised that they were going, they, they canceled our contract basically um, towards the end of last year. I, um, I reached out to the um, CEO for Meals on Wheels and the president and um, literally begged them. I said, please don't punish the seniors for something that's not in their control. Um, allow me some time to get everything situated, caught up, which I have. But I also made it clear because the lack of funding coming in we're probably going to find ourselves in the same boat within a couple of months. It's just 
it's kind of sad, to be honest, after looking. I, I could tell after doing the books for a couple months, something was off. I know at the time that uh, this is from the previous board presidents straight from his mouth that when they discovered they thought was alleged theft, they reached out to the then city manager, Monique. She uh, provided them advice, suggested that they close the center down and not to assume that there was only one player involved in the theft, that there could be multiple people, but instead, they chose to ignore that and continue to keep the center open. A forensic audit should have been performed at that time. It wasn't. And to answer Mr. Roman's question saying about the audit, it's FY23 only because that's what we could afford. I agree. FY22 audit should have been performed. A forensic audit should have been performed because that would have given you a true picture how much money. But then again, it's hard to track cash. It's not reported, so it's my two cents. And do you recall about the um, any information? Because I know there was a uh, we discovered that there was a selling of a vehicle. One of the vehicles, yes. Mm -hmm. I think um, I I can't really speak to that because that was that didn't take place while I was there. Um, I think we were in Colorado with my taking care of my terminal uncle. So I came back to hearing that. Um, I don't know like who it was sold, but I believe if I remember correctly, it was sold to pay off because it was in disarray with payments. Um, I, I think it was sold to kind of just wipe the debt clean with that particular service company. Thank you. Okay, I'll start with the questions. Anyone? To, I'm sorry? You finished with the public hearing, you have to close it. It wasn't so, a Yeah, we, we, they marked out the public hearing. We had asked for it last week, and they basically took it off. The lawyers did, actually. Yeah, okay. um, it's not supposed to be. Yeah, that's the, the, it, it should have been on there. As a matter of fact, two council members requested it. For the public hearing? Mm -hmm. and then, I thought it was discussion to have a public no, hearing. No, no, no. It was for a public hearing. Yeah. Yeah, that's the reason why we were making such a big deal about it not being on the last on the last one. Okay, so um, I did want to ask a couple questions about some of the uh, congregate meals. I mean, we we're talking about these issues of uh, of ACOG, and I called ACOG just to kind of get an idea of what would happen if the uh, city did take over the senior center. And I spoke to a uh, Mr. Wattes and uh, he stated that as long as nothing changed, that there would not be a change in the budget. Um, but that would mean you could not expand staff or amenity and um, that any of those types of changes would actually uh, potentially affect the budget and not in necessarily a positive way. Uh, they stated that their focus was on 60 and older and congregate meals. And their expectation was for us to follow guidelines and provide a clean environment. So after speaking with him, I um, had looked into some of my uh, old emails and I had received one from a Gloria Galav Galavilla Nuns. I don't know if that's her last name, but she was from ACOG. And she was speaking of tacos and waffles and chalupas and lasagna that were being prepared outside of Kirby Congregate Meal Site and brought in for older adults to consume. Um, it said this was an extreme deviation from the a serious harm to older adults with compromised health conditions who are in serious jeopardy of having reimbursement stop at ACOG and the contract canceled. Um, as previously discussed uh, with your funder's requirements regarding meals, menus prepared by a registered dietitian is required to be submitted each month as a documentation of the meal served. It says that I discussed with you, no food is allowed to be brought in and one birthday celebration a month is allowed with cake um, to celebrate birthdays for the month. Previously, I discussed with you that we received information that fruit cups, flavored sugar water was being prepared and served at Congregate Meal Site. You assured me that water was only infused with lemon, lime, oranges, and no sugar was added or being served. Please see attached email. And then what ends up happening is I get another immediate email after that um, stating, uh, after being notified the last anonymous complaint, I'd reached out to the other senior centers, received guidance regarding the meals. They advise the centers do not cook anything, and they only provide Congregate Meals to members. 
However, members do have potlucks occasionally to celebrate special occasions. For the potlucks, the seniors are bringing in the items, and the center does not provide anything. I'd also spoken with staff nutritionists at San Antonio Senior Center who advised the center can't cook unless the dietitian nutritionist is on staff. But he did mention that meals could be purchased from a licensed kitchen that is following the appropriate guidelines. The meals mentioned in the most recent anonymous complaint are potlucks provided uh, by members. For example, a member had a birthday today and the member's wife and other members want to cook and celebrate with seniors at the center. The center still provided congregate meals, which the members ate and anyone that wanted to partake in the potluck did. Um, and it said, are the members not allowed to hold their own potlucks? Please advise on make sure the center is abiding by all rules and will no longer allow for the potlucks to be held. So that comes in. Then immediately after that one, I get one from um, the mayor stating that I am not supposed to be on these threads and to please remove my name and Mr. Martin's. Um, then after that, uh, apparently, this is where uh, Mr. Barboza goes to the uh, senior center and uh, gets in um, a conflict with one of the other seniors there and because she's bringing in tamales and he's telling her that she can't do it. And then what ends up happening is she ends up throwing a big fit. He ends up throwing a fit back. Next thing you know, he's being kicked out of the senior center. Um, by a uh, massive means by being ejected like like with a uh, criminal trespass warning. So it becomes a huge ordeal because the idea here is that he may be the one who is uh, who is diming out the wrongdoings that are happening here. Um, however, hold on. Please. However, what I will say to, to that effect or whatever is that I have heard from other seniors as well that there are situations that have been coming up with you know seniors getting into quarrels, which I mean, as when I hung around the senior center that it happened all the time, you know, it just, you know, seniors being seniors on that end. But now the idea here is when those coral, those little corals do happen that, you know, they're trying to figure out ways where we can talk it out or take it outside rather than issuing criminal no trespasses against members. Um, and, and, and really it just felt like, you know, the idea of that was massive targeting to, to a senior. Um, so that type of stuff I also don't agree with. And when we're talking about this idea of, of us taking it over, I mean, we really have to understand the brevity of, of, of what we're talking about. Not to mention, um, as uh, the director came up and stated that there were issues that were happening prior. Okay, you know, we can, we can accept those types of things. But we also have to accept the types of things that are happening during. This is during your tenure. Okay. And the, the, the date. And, yeah, it's got the date on it here. You can. No, 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 I already know. Oh, okay. They put the date out there so they oh, know. Oh, so okay. I can, after this, we can have the rebuttal. For it was, you. yeah, it was November 20th of 2023. Thank you. And then, um, so anyway, what I'm saying though is, again, the, uh, as, as Ms. Gomez is stating, that there are issues of, of funding. And the funding from the senior center has come from grants, of which the director, right, is in charge of writing, but needs an audit and stuff to do so, and comes from the board of which how many things have we done to generate revenue? And not we, because I'm not part of it, but how many things has the board done to generate revenue? That's something that should also be addressed because that was part of the funding. And the idea here is now that the city can take it over and just take over all the debt and all the funding, it just doesn't seem right. Especially since they've been running as a standalone entity for, well, since I've been involved. 30 years. Well, I don't think it's been that long, to be honest with you. But, I mean, I know since I've been involved, it, they've been running as a standalone entity. So I'm just saying, I mean, there, there is opportunity, right, with Pressa and, and ACOG and all these other things to get these grants. I mean, we talked about CBDG. There was no reason for us to be writing CBDG grants from the city to help the senior center. The senior center can write its own CBDG grants. They're eligible to do it. And that, that's why I'm saying, like, I mean, there's opportunity for these things to come in. Uh, you know, it's just a matter of, of, and this is what I thought putting the uh, the council on the board was going to do, was it going to clean up this area, put it there so we could start generating the revenue that it could run on its own. Not so we could take it over and, and add it to another faction of the city so we have another bill coming in per, per year. I mean, it's going to be another budgeted item. We're talking, I mean, she was saying one of the contracts was worth $160,000. I mean, is that something we are going to take on? Is that the expectation? Wait, that's again. She did say that. She said we lost. We lost a contract worth 160. Did, is that what she said? Or did I miss it? It was at 120. It was over 100. Can you please step up here because so. Uh, just can you define what the press of contract was worth again? Uh, the last uh, 132. 132. I, I'm sorry, I was off by 20,000. And that was that ended when? Let me see there. 
because that ended a while ago. Yeah. And also, by the way, Preston said <laughs> more than likely no go again. Okay. They don't want to deal with what uh, happened before. October 21 to September 22, $132,525. Wow, 132000 So 22. Okay. But that's exactly what I'm stating. Is the city going to take on that expense? We haven't been using. So, okay. Right now, we don't have that type of money in the city. What they've been running on right now. So this is 2024. Uh, understood. So they lost that in 2022. So 2023, they weren't even using that type of money. 2024, they're now using that type of money, and they've been. We just been holding on, basically I, month to month, paycheck to paycheck. But I want to go back to, for instance, yes, um, you needed an audit to get the grants everywhere that our director contacted. And by the way, also too, besides, I know some of you think I don't do anything, but when I go to different events and I go talk to different people, I talk about how we can get help different functions or entities in the Kirby. And one thing I was talking to was about the senior center. There was an organization who was just like, of course, but then they were like, you need an audit. And so that's why it came to play that we needed a current audit. Um, and also too, saying that, yes, the, the senior center, I think last year was like the 30 year anniversary or something, but um, in the history of the city, don't make it like we all forget because it was way not too long ago, but the city did give the senior center, I think it was up to like $20,000 and that stopped. And do you know why that stopped? That stopped because during the audit process, they, we thought then there was some funny business going around. And that's why that stuff stopped. So, again, all of this has been dr the do same documents about the senior center um, the sit coming under the city. All of this stuff has happened before. It's been talked about before under the city attorney at that time was Mark Schnall. He has paperwork. The same questions have been asked over and over again, even at that time. Um ACOG, the breakdown of ACOG, the amount of money that we get from ACOG is how much? You want current year? Correct. Uh, well, I'll give you the, last two years. ACOG, um, October 21 to September 22, $46,140.84. October 22 to September 23, $70,626. That's direct result of membership growing. So having to um, get reimbursement for more meals. And via? Via. $64,350 for October 22 to September 23. There's nothing on uh, October, October 21 to September 22. Okay. So right now the senior center is running off about $134,000. Now, I also want to make sure that we understand that letter that happened, that was a situation. The, the previous board, and in the history of the city of Kirby and the senior center, they would sometimes even cook for the seniors. They would bring outside food in for the seniors. There was multiple parties. I've been there. I had Thanksgiving with the seniors, so I knew it was happening also. Okay? Now... As soon as the council took over the board, then there was a ploy and all of a sudden the former, some former board members and some others decided to start this hounding on the senior center. And so what they did was they would report every time they would see something in there. Yeah. So for example, right now our seniors cannot even have coffee because of the reports that went to ACOG. I mean, it's like deals with nope. sugar packets. Like, it's ridiculous uh, now. I, I mean, that's what I'm saying. That's where we got now to the point. Actually, the um, And also, okay. so the tacos, um, we have the one, the birthday uh, meal, because it used to bring in outside, um, like H-E-B or wherever used to bring in the food, you know, to cook, to cook the food or something like that. All of that stuff has ceased. Now we just have the birthday cake. And if they want to do something outside, they do something outside. Even one of our seniors was reported to eating um, breakfast twice. I mean, it's getting to the point. I mean, seriously, like, anyways, but the point is all of that has been cleared up. Um, there is no outside food. As soon as there's outside food, we let them know, hey, 
you're going to make us lose the contract because we've been threatened by that email that came over and over again. So that's why we had a meeting with ACOG, myself and um, the director. We had a meeting with ACOG at the senior center, sat down along with uh, Miguel and Gloria, and we had a conversation about that. Can I clarify something, too, because yes. I'm sure it, it will be another anonymous call? Yes. Um, ACOG has all also advised us as long as they get their nutrition, their breakfast and their lunch. So they advise us anything you do outside after lunch, we cannot control. True. So we just cannot have anything outside as far as that. Anything that would prevent them from eating their provided meal, breakfast or lunch from Meals on Wheels. Unless we have a, a dietitian on staff. Yeah, and that. currently that's what they were trying to get somebody who actually was being nice because they know that the seniors are struggling and we would actually like them to have coffee without trying to hide it. So they're actually sure trying to get a dietitian and that's coming up um, shortly. But right now they're living off of what I said, 134. Yeah, about $134,000. That's what the senior center. And ACOG stated that the amount of money, because March is the time frame, or March, April is the time frame now when they start doing the contracts yes. for the next physical They've year. They've already sent it out. And they, Okay. And they already stated that it's not, they just want to ample time to make sure the transition went smooth that we were to do this. And they were saying it started for the new physical. Via said the same thing. Now, Via stated that, yes, their contract might go in half. So they might, instead of 64000 it might go to 30000 They did say that. But they also just said, hey, give a, don't do it right away. If you're going to do this, give us ample time for the new physical year. Um, we pay for everything that's been going on with that senior center, the building repairs. I mean, they're supposed to have the refrigerator and freezer fixed. I know some of you help, help um, hold that up. The floor up. is buckling. The floor, the floor is buckling. Um, the AC, I mean, I know everybody was upset when Dr. Roland made that emergency purchase, but I mean, the senior center passed out because of heat. I mean, I guess you want us back on the news. I don't know. But something like that, you have to get things done. So everything with that center, and there's other things that are actually wrong with that center also. So we're paying for all this stuff anyways. Councilmember Garza. Okay, so that's wrong in, in what I heard you say. Um, number one, you had stated that coffee was a major issue or whatever, that they're not even allowed to have coffee. That That isn't a rule of, of people calling in. That isn't a rule of anything. It's a rule of ACOG. They're the ones actually paying for the congregate meals and determining what can and can't happen at the senior center. So, I mean, that that is on them more than it is on anybody else, number one. Number two, being on the board and cleaning it up would have uh, incorporated the idea of getting an audit so we could actually get uh, grant funding. Um, what I don't quite understand is we had stated, um, even even though you guys voted on it, we did as well, but on a budget of giving $10,000 to the senior center. I, it was my understanding that that was supposed to go to an audit. What did it go to? It's going to an audit. Yeah, it's going to the audit. It's just insane. She, that's why she said that 10000 And to correct, saving. it was supposed to be 20000 No, no, somehow, it was supposed to be 10000 actually. No, no, no we had discussed it, and then we had talked about it, 20, and when we 000. talked about it, actually, it got knocked down to 10000 It did, during it did our discussion. Not. Well, it did get knocked down, yeah. It did. But it was it did. initially... Yes, um, I, exactly. But I mean, again, when it came down to it or whatever, the whole idea of utilizing that $10,000 was to get an audit so that we could further you know, push the idea that uh, the senior center could get its own funding. And and with that audit, right, I mean, we can now apply for grants, including CBDGs. Is that correct? Yes. Yes. See, so, I mean, why, why, why does it have to be a faction of the city? That's the part that I'm having a little problem with. And the reason why I'm having a problem with it is because now, as coming as a faction of the city, it's going to actually take on um, its own budget. We're going to have to budget it in. We're going to have to add money to it. OK, and as of right now, we're just a landlord and they're and they're providing all their own funds. So there's that problem. Um, also, one of the other problems that I that I didn't that I found kind of um, oddballed here was when all of this stuff happened where one of the seniors brought in uh, food um, and it violated this, you know, their congregate meals. And that person wasn't kicked out. Who was kicked out was the person who essentially had been pressed to the idea that he told on the well, what happened was the seniors didn't feel comfortable. They all fought. 
complaints about him because he yelled out in front of everyone. I've got bigger balls than all of y'all. Mm -hmm. And uh, and and I mean, he just yelled this out of nowhere, or was was uh, was there an issue of someone actually fighting with him? Because when you did come up and discuss this prior, yeah, you had no mention of the other thing. You made it sound as though he was just running around discussing his genitalia, and and that's not that's not what happened. Uh, I've that's heard from the, the seniors, seniors too. Though. I mean, just I, I still talk to a lot of them as well. So I mean, I know that these are the types of things that are going on still. And the thing is, is it just it didn't seem right that. What the are one, the kind of things that are going on, sir? Uh, the one, the one like well, this, this instance is what I'm saying. In this instance, I know that that was what what was what was going on. I know what happened and what was being stated about what happened in that in that time. You know, but of course, like the the one person who, you know, who didn't get anything, didn't get told anything, was the one who initiated everything, just immediately got absolved. And it seemed very, very wrong. And, and what ended up happening was this idea that there was a belief that this person was the one uh, sending you out to a or, or diming you out to ACOG, hence the reason why he was, you know, kicked out. But still, those are the things. I'm trying to understand, um, number one, why that happened. Number two, you know, by taking over the board, why we didn't, you know, immediately try to just get an audit so that we could ensure that we were getting funding so we could stay a component unit. And um, why coffee and that coffee is not an issue because of somebody reporting it. It's an issue because it's an ACOG issue like it. They're the ones paying. It's it's an issue because they make it an issue. No, like, I understand that it should have been an issue before also. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're absolutely right. But I mean, uh, what are we trying to get here? I mean, you know, we keep going round and round this issue about uh, people being upset at, at, at another. I mean, it's happened. Uh, you know, there were people <coughs> complaining. There was a complaint on this person. Where are we going? I mean, what are we trying to do here? I mean, we keep on and on and on, and that's what everybody sees is that we come up here and we start uh, arguing about this. Uh, what do we need to do here? Where are we going to go with this? It's a question that I have. Uh, we need to move on on this. Move the question on. Um, well, before, before we decide, I just want to make sure everybody's clear before we make whoever makes the motion. It's basically what this is not saying that tomorrow the board is dissolved. We're basically saying that if whoever, if they, you want to vote on this, saying moving forward that October 1, the new physical year for 2025, that's when it will become under the city because the contracts, ACOG, VIA, they have to have ample enough time and the city attorneys, because there's a process, it has to go like to the, uh, the state of Texas, I believe, like there's a whole process yeah, that goes process. with it. It's like 90 days and then two weeks. It's not that fast. Um, so they would start working on that end, but it's not saying tomorrow it's dissolved and the center is going to shut down. That's not it. So it will be voting, voting to move forward um, to dissolve the board for uh for October 2025. Okay, so we're what we need to look here is is if uh, we want the city to take over the senior center and start the process. That's what we're looking for here, Correct. more than anything. The new okay. yes, for physical for a new year. physical yes. year in October. Correct. So from now to October, we have what uh, ten, three, six months. So right now is the time to get going. See, that's the problem that we always have. We, we'll keep on, the, uh, you know. Uh, excuse my language, but we keep on uh, discussing this and not, not really discussing, just pointing at this, that, and the other, and we don't get anything done. We need to decide if we want to go on and take over this, like you're saying, uh, Mayor, uh, and move on with this, because if not, we'll just keep on, oh, but this is what it says, and we can't do that, and we can't do that. Well, well we're trying to get somewhere here. And unless we start doing something, uh, and 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 going and saying uh, yes, uh, let's have the, the city attorney or, or the interim city manager start working on it. We need to do it, or uh, you know we're going to be here uh, come September. Oh, we need to get this done because October's coming up, and this is it. I mean, let's stop, guys. Let's stop and start doing something right. Let's not just keep on pointing our fingers at everybody because that's what we're doing. <laughs> that's what we have been doing before on the other two, and that's what we're doing right now. And, you know, what time is it already? I mean, you know, it's getting late, and we haven't done nothing. Okay. 
Mayor, I make a motion to direct the interim city manager to proceed with legal guidance to dissolve the nonprofit Kirby Senior Center and board and discussion and action on the creation of a city department to be assigned under the city of Kirby city manager for fiscal year 2020, but, Hold on, before you second, hold on, before it seconds that, I, I would like to say that I think that we needed a second opinion on whether or not the city attorney should allow you guys to vote. Floor. So we have... October 2025. No, uh, October. We'll wait a minute. Year. What did we say? Year, I mean, so yeah, 2024, correct. Yes. Okay. Okay. Right. Yeah. It's supposed to be 24, October 2020. Uh, yeah. I don't know how that, so you would have to, um, so can I rescind it. and, and, or can I just correct it? I think you can correct it. Okay. So I'm correcting. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So I'm correcting my motion to uh, reflect fiscal year 2024. Second. I okay. have a motion on the t a 20. Uh, after let me do this motion and then we'll have to go back we have to resend it we'll resend it okay i have a motion on the floor um to direct the interim city manager to proceed with legal guidance to dissolve the nonprofit kirby senior center and board in discussion and action i mean and i'm mean, that's the reading of this is crazy and discussion and action on the creation of a city department to be assigned under the city of kirby by the city manager for October 2024. First by Mayor Pro Tem Apodaca, seconded by Council Member Molina. Please call roll. Council Member Hicks? Yes. Council Member Lozano? Yes. Council Member Martin? No. Council Member Molina? Yes. Council Member Garza? As per Title V, I don't believe they have the ability to vote. I'm just going to make that clear because obviously we're going to look into it, but I, I vote no. Yes. Yes. Okay. Passed. Correct. Okay. Um, Miss uh, Gomez. So October 2024 would be the start of fiscal year 25. So I'm thinking that's where the confusion Oh, that's comes. why I would say 25. Okay. Correct. But that's understood. 24. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Moving on. Um, I would like to make this. Um, can hold on one. I was about to say, can we move Mr. Bain? I'm sorry. I didn't even know oh, that. Was gonna, about that to say? That's what I was going to say. Cause I was just thinking, why is he still here? Like, I know we're not that interested. Uh, you know, so like, uh, <laughs> like, I want to move. Okay. Or I make a motion to yeah. move, uh, I next, you know, before F, uh, so we can get that discussion. Uh, do I have second. a second? Okay. okay, have a motion on the table to move 8I before 8F. First by Council Member Molina, second by Mayor Pro Tem, Adaka, Mayor Pro Tem Apodaca. Please call roll. Council Member Martin? Yes. Council Member Lozano? Yes. 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 Mr. Bain. And I do apologize. Sorry, I, I didn't look at that to see that those weren't in a row. Okay. No problem. And so that would be I discussion of possible action to authorize the interim <coughs> city manager to enter into a contract with Bain Medina Bain in the approximate amount of 39000 for an updated evaluation of payment management road services, evaluation of city streets. Okay. Go ahead, sir. So, of course, I came to the last meeting and made the presentation. Uh, this was for the roadway uh, asset services to go out and survey the streets. Uh, we had a number of uh, references that they provided, 
and I know there was some question that some people were going to check into that and uh, see what, of course, it was City of Sabine, City of New Braunfels, City of Bernie. They've all uh, had work done by this company to do the uh, inspection of the street uh, to do a pavement management service. So I'll open it up for questions, comments. Councilman Martin, I'm just good. I'm good with that because the last one I think we did in five years ago or four years ago, I think we paid one hundred five thousand dollars to MNS Engineering, and that's why I agreed to do it with this, with you, because it's a lot cheaper. Well, and I think you'll get a better product this time. That other was a, a different company that did it more by hand, right? And that's probably why it cost a little more. <laughs> They're using uh, electronic equipment right. and a van. Councilmember Garza? Yes, I don't disagree that this may be a better product, but I still think that uh, to uh, reevaluate the roads, um, as we were stating, or as uh, Ms. Street stated earlier, um, we have, what, 94 streets? I mean, the fact of the matter is, is we don't necessarily need anybody to tell us you know, when $39,000 could actually go into fixing a street. I mean, we could really put it into fixing the rest of uh, Bauman or the rest of Hedwig. So I truly believe that, uh, you know, that this may be something useful in the future. But at this moment, I just don't think it is. I think the action, I think what we ought to do is fix the roads, not necessarily just continually evaluate them. And as we already had an evaluation five years ago, I truly believe that that should, that should suffice. We should basically choose the roads that we're going to do, and I mean, just take take a drive, drive down every drive down in every street, figure out the ones that are the main thoroughfares. Unfortunately, that's one thing that a lot of these things don't take into account is you know how much traffic and and why that one should be first. You know, it just is like, well, this one's really really bad. But I mean, you know, like MNS Engineering, I mean, they they rated Sparkling is one of the worst streets, but it was just a pass through, like from Ackerman to Gaiety, like. Very few people drive down that street, and most people thought it was just a dirt road that somebody had built. Like, I mean, I just, I just don't think that that these types of expenses are are really useful in you know the scheme of what we're trying to accomplish. Do you think what's the normal um, assessment time between? Is it five years, ten years, when you get uh, a new street assessment? Normal cities do about five years. The city of San Antonio does five years, and I think uh, these cities around here do five years. Five years. Okay. Councilman Molina? I disagree with Councilman Garza, uh, but I, because uh, I do think that we need to do this and, and get a, a professional opinion. That way it helps us understand what the streets look like from somebody that does this on, on a professional basis. Uh, us driving down the street and doing this, uh, you know, we could say, yes, do this or that. But uh, I think like we've discussed previously about a month or month and a half ago is that we need to get uh, input from professional and that way uh, we can uh, understand what's going to this. We always discuss that, yeah, we need to get the streets done. I mean, you know, some of the other stuff has been uh, also uh, bypassed, like on the grants that we were talking about, like, no, we're just going for streets and the streets are our number one priority. But we can't forget about uh, uh, other things that are going in in the city as well. So uh, I agree with this. I think that this is a good investment myself. Councilmember Lozano. Uh, Mr. Bank, can you tell me like the pros and cons of going with a company versus us going down the street and checking to see you know, which street it needs it, which doesn't, sidewalks, anything like that? Well, this gives you a lot of information that you can't get just by visually uh, walking it or driving it on that, in that it gives you a record that you can fall back on. It also will give you a approximate construction cost for the different uh, methods to uh, fix a street, to improve a street on there, and it'll give you a base to work off of in the future that you can build on. So you'll be able to build on this program that uh, the data that they give you, and you can add to it if you want to, as far as water and sewer lines onto your street system. 
on there. And so you can build a database that you don't really have as an electronic database. So it provides some additional things like that that will help you. The other thing is it does a scientific method of rating the streets versus a personal opinion of rating the streets. Because I can go down and look at street, have one opinion, a different engineer can go look at street and have a different opinion mm -hmm. on there. Mm -hmm. So it kind of takes that personal uh, opinion out and it gives you more of a scientific rating of streets. So it will give us a rating of per st which street needs it more or, okay. But it will still be up to the council mm -hmm. to decide which street that this street will cost this much, this street this much on there. And depending on the method of, you know, some streets will be total reconstructions, other might be a mill and overlay, others might be just a uh, crack seal, things like that, and seal coat. So there's, there's different methods to, you know, you should try to maintain your streets with a street maintenance budget. Of course, I know the city has you know, hurting for funds, but the city of San Antonio puts over a hundred million dollars into their street maintenance program. And that is multiple different types of ways of maintaining their street. So they go out and do this survey. They follow that survey as far as the recommendation. And uh, they put over a hundred million dollars in their street maintenance program. And, and 10 years ago, they only put $20 million into it. They only what? I'm sorry. $20 million. Okay. So they've gone, you know, five over five times mm -hmm. the budget. Now, of course, City Kirby doesn't have that money, and of course, you know, we understand that on there. So. And then, um, this company is not the only one that does this type. Okay. So, you recommended this one because of the cost, is it, or did you go and get other? No, I did not get prices from everybody. I've, I've dealt with the people that are associated with this company before. Uh, they did work for, with me before in the city of San Antonio when we did a, a payment uh, analysis. And uh, they've done all this work for these other cities around here. And so they come with a good recommendation with the references. Do you know if this is like the average price for? Uh, I do not know what the average price is. I didn't do a survey. Okay. Councilman regards that. Uh, just to give you some insight, we actually did spend more on the one that we did prior to this with MS Engineering, just so everybody's aware. I don't remember how much it was, but I think it was like 56 or something around that nature. I know it was over 50. Um, first off, secondly, if we had a hundred million dollar budget, man, I'd say do this every six months. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. For Kirby, that would be amazing. We could fill everything. Um, you know, but the idea of comparing us to Antonio in that retrospect, I, I feel, uh, makes, uh, makes it a little difficult for us because, you know, what is our average street budget? You know, like last year, I think it was $300,000 of which we moved around after budgeting to put back into, uh, other things that that you know that we had to do budget adjustments for um first off uh secondly um i mean a lot of this doesn't account for the amount of driving that's going down these roads so in essence right we could sit here and say okay look uh hedwig right between uh bauman and uh janky is you know, horrible. Yes, it is. It's really bad. And I mean, there's some people who drive down that street, but it's not as frequented as Old Seguin Road or as Diadem or as Ackerman, you know? So um, that is the one thing I think that really um, opposes me to stuff like this is because you can make determinations on the streets all day long, but it's a matter when you're making those decisions on how it affects how many people, you know? So, um, it, again, if they do a street assessment, they're going to look at old Seguin as though, well, that one's, you know, not so bad, but they'll look at like sparkling and be like, oh no, this one needs to be done immediately. But you know, if you were to do the numbers to determine how many people actually drive down that street, you would come to find like old Seguin is like a hundred or 300 times driven more than sparkling ever would be. So that's one of the issues that I have with, with, uh, this and, and truly, I do believe that this money would be better spent on fixing a street rather than just assessing it. Thank you. But 
this is just one criteria that you can use. You know, it, it helps in the data to have this information as far as what it costs to fix the streets, which is are your worst streets. That doesn't mean you take the number one and fix it. You know, that's just one data point that you use and you, as the council, can set the criteria. Basis on, you know, you can go out and do traffic studies and see how much, of course, this isn't a traffic study, but you can do a traffic study and count how many cars drive on each of your streets and then figure out using that method as far as how you want to use that traffic study with a pavement analysis to determine. But I'm, I'm not saying that you need to do a traffic study. I'm just saying that you got to use different criteria to set how you want to improve your streets and which streets yeah. you do first. I'm not saying you take the first one blindly and say that that's what we do. Yeah, no, and I, I completely agree with you on that. Uh, but again, too, we have one of these. You know, we don't have a traffic study. Thanks. Okay. Anybody else want to make a motion or not? I make a motion uh, that uh, uh, we are. Uh, but how we put it down here so I can get it correctly. Uh, <clears throat> to authorize the interim uh, city manager to enter into a uh, contract with uh, Bain Medina Bain uh, in the approximate amount of 39,000 uh, for an update evaluation of payment management road services. Second. Have a motion on the table to authorize the interim city manager to enter into a contract with Bain Medina Bain in the approximate amount of 39,000 for an updated evaluation of payment management road services of evaluation of city streets. First by Councilmember Molina, second by Mayor Pro Tem Apodaca. Please call roll. Councilmember No. Yes. Yes. No. Yes. Yes. No. It passed. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. Can make a motion to take a break? Ten minute break. A second. Oh. <laughs> All right. So we have a motion to take um, a ten minute. Well, we don't have to make a motion. If you want to take a break? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, since you said it now, we have to. Okay. okay. So okay. we have a motion to take a 10 minute break. Um, first by Councilmember Lozano, seconded by Councilmember Martin. Please call roll. Yes. 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 No. Yes. Nice. Right now. Yeah. I know, but you could have did it right after then. That's what I was trying to say. You can go do it 